receiver in his second year. He's their team captain. This guy right here, I get excited about him. A couple weeks ago uh, on Thanksgiving, they were playing against those Cowboys, and Jalen Smith Chase intercepted down. the ball. And you can see right here, when he intercepts the ball, Remember DK Metcalf went and caught Buda Baker a couple weeks ago? Yep. Look at this right here. McLaren go down there and catch him. They only score three points on that drive. That is an outstanding play. That's an effort play. That's why he's the team captain. Look at that. I love that Ultimate shot. In his, <laughs> in, his, in his second year, this guy, he's going to go over 1,000 yards tonight. He has 11 touchdowns. He is a, no, so Gibson has 11 touchdowns. He's got yeah. three touchdowns. But this guy, they have a good core unit around Alex. Yes, sir. You know, and also, let's not forget, this started with, I think, the hiring of Ron Rivera. They brought him in. He has stabilized that franchise, yep. even with all the craziness they had in the offseason. And he's battled cancer this year. Yep. So this is a Amazing team that you, you kind of yeah. root for, in yeah. all honesty. By the way, when he first came in, McLaurin, yeah. the first guy, he said, that's going to be my guy. Mm -hmm. He was sold on him from day one. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah, as well he should be. Yeah. All right, we'll check and get a little bit more from Jay a little bit later about Big Ben and how he's doing. We'll also hear from Terry Bradshaw in just a bit. But you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't honor the sacrifice and the significance of this day, December 7th. It marks the 79th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. The NFL actually played a game that day, including Washington's contest against the Philadelphia Eagles in what has become known as the most forgotten NFL game ever played. Five years ago, we were fortunate enough to be part of the, one of the most memorable shows in the history of Fox Sports. It came from the deck of the battleship Missouri at Pearl Harbor. The gravity of those who made the ultimate sacrifice at that naval base is still with us. It's also a reminder to thank all the brave men and women of the U.S. military who continue to keep us safe. This is the 5G America's been waiting for, only from Verizon. The food reference earlier will say this game between Washington and Pittsburgh, just the appetizer of Monday football, Monday night football. Comes your way, Bills and 49ers over on ESPN starting at 8.15 Eastern time later this evening. Of course, we are just moments away from kickoff of Washington and the unbeaten Pittsburgh Steelers, who have one of the most dynamic and best group of young wide receivers in the game. At 11-0, Chase Claypool and Juju Smith-Schuster have now taken over TikTok, and they're having a blast. They're having a lot of fun. It's scary. A talented team that enjoys being around each other. I think the best part about us while we're having so much fun is that there's no selfish people on the team. Everyone's happy for everyone to succeed, you know. Claypool, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Every time someone, you know, scores a touchdown, it feels like, you know, we scored our own touchdown. We come up with touchdown celebrations, you know, just to make it fun and, and wow, so it's pretty cool. The wide receiver room is obviously trying to enjoy themselves, you know, having a lot of fun, coming up with these celebrations. We're young, you know, we're vibing together. Just trying to enjoy ourselves, guys being dudes, you know? Oh, great googly moogly, that is pure Canadian bacon, Chalupa. Yeah, the Canadian bacon. Juju's TikTok game is obviously the best in the NFL. I think one thing he does a lot that's really cool is the transition. It's something I haven't really been doing or working on. Everyone in the NFL is trying to do what Juju does. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch up with him. You know, I'm always about having fun, uh, dancing, trying to have a great time. People are like, yo, Juju's on TikTok, he's doing this, Juju's doing that. People want to see who's the guy under the mask. Got the w. I, go celebrate. I think if you're, um, you're fake, people can, you know, sniff that out pretty easily. There's no point being fake, you know, if you want people to know who you truly are. Where I'm at today is that I'm authentic. I'm true to myself no matter what. The number one rule in life is always have fun. And when you're having fun, um, nothing can bring you down. I'm with Eric. Well, obviously, you know, winning's fun. And um, the guys in the locker room have been vibing. If we were so serious and up, uptight and, like, tense about our performance, I think that would affect us. I think that's the motto we've always had, you know? Having fun, you know, for one another. No matter who gets the wall, no matter how many targets, how many catches you have, how many yards, how many touchdowns you have. And we all have personal goals, like, don't get that wrong, but at the end of the day, our team goal is obviously to win a world championship. It's always been about, like, yo, we win the game, we go home, we're 12 and 0, you know? It's easy to have fun when you're a perfect 11 and 0, right? I guess you could say, though, these two are just the latest in a long history of wide receiver gems that the Steelers have been able to find in the draft. That goes all the way back to Plexico Burris, at least in the recent era. Guys like Heinz Ward, Antonio Brown. If you want to go back even further, 
You've got Len Swan, John Stallworth, all those guys in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and it just continues. Of course, the guy who threw all those TD passes back to Swan and Stallworth, our own Blonde Bomber. The MVP is Terry Bradshaw. Something that you could not argue with. Deep for Stallworth. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Steelers are the world champs. And the Steelers were Super Bowl champions for the second year in a row. Victorious in Super Bowl 14. And the one and only Blonde Bomber joins us from his home in Thackerville, Oklahoma, in the holiday spirit. It looks great behind you. Good to see you again, brother. You know... How you talk... doing, Kurt? All right, man. We talk about this Pittsburgh Steeler team, and yes, they are 11-0, but it seems, though, they're very quiet 11-0, if you will. Well, I... Listen, I think considering what's going on in, in the world today and here in America, we look at the COVID-19... Uh, all the attention that's being paid to that, and rightfully so. Uh, this pandemic has taken the focus off of a lot of things. We've tried to have our NBA championship, and we did. And a lot of folks forgot that the Lakers actually won it. And so now they're getting ready to start another season. Football is kind of got caught up in that because we had schedules change. Monday night moved to Tuesday night, Tuesday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday back to Monday, Sunday. And the schedules have all been out of whack. And then caught up in all of this is the fact that the Steelers are 11 and 0. And it's, oh, by the way, the Steelers are 11 and yeah. 0. But it's really not them we're talking about. Everybody wants to talk about Kansas City, but it's the Steelers. Hey, stay with me here, because making that point, they're a quiet 11 and 0. Everybody's saying they're right. not as good as Kansas City. They're the second best team in football, is what people are saying. Does that actually right. benefit? The Steelers to not be talked about like a lot of teams are, like New England was at this time when they were going through that undefeated season? <clears throat> the Steelers have a proud tr uh, tradition that's gone on 50 years, and they don't have to say, we need our respect. So, yeah, I do think they let everybody blow and go about Kansas City, and rightfully so, and they just go about, about their business. They And their business right now behind this uh, Roethlisberger offense is it's a horizontal offense, 51 passes, quick out, quick in, quick, quick hitches. Not so much the vertical game anymore as, as opposed to the horizontal. And the Steelers are perfectly fine letting Kansas City get all the love and attention. All right, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully on Thursday night, brother. Take care. I'll be there. Thank you, Kurt. All right, man. Michael Vick, just pick up on that point there, you know, about this now being a vertical offense with Ben Roethlisberger. There was a time at least this week, we weren't even sure he was going to play. Yeah. But last week, I mean, he threw the ball 51 times. Yeah, no, I like what Terry said. And, and getting the ball out has been a premium for Big Ben and getting it out in 2.2 seconds or whatever it is. It's just some things that is a thing that has to happen, you know, when you can't run the ball effectively. And, you know, for the passing game and for Ben, you know, you just got to continue to just keep hammering at it, hammering at it. Don't give up. You, he had the talent, you know, with, with the guys around him. Just got to believe in the vertical passing game, allow the short passing game to work for you until you can go deep and catch up with teams down the field. Yeah, yeah, but, but people, like you said right there, oh, they can't run the football. But when you look at them, like you said, they're getting the ball out so quickly. He's mm. getting the ball out. The quickest quarterback with the release of the football uh, in the NFL. And what does that tell me? That means they're going short passes. And what does that tell me? Okay, that's the extension of the running game. And so you really don't need to pound the ball too much right. if you don't want to. And it's not like he can't go do it. We know what he's capable of. But here's, here's really what it comes down to. The reason they're having so much success is Ben Roethlisberger only has six interceptions this year. That's it. Now, last year he got hurt. But before that, the previous five years, he was in double-digit interceptions every single year. So that tells me he takes care of the ball. You got that defense. You have the extension of the run game. That's why I believe in this team. I know they might not be as good as Kansas City, but, hey, I bet your bottom dollar that I think they'll be playing in that they'll AFC championship yeah, game. You know where it starts, though? Mm -hmm. You know where it all starts? The culture that Mike Tomlin builds. That's where it all starts. And whether it was injuries in the past and now with the team dealing with COVID, he's always had this message. And I've talked to him an awful lot. He's had the same exact message. Whatever hand we're dealt with, that's the hand we're going to play. And that's it. And if he's told that to me every single week, Think of how much he's told it to those guys inside that locker room. Where they really buy into it and believe it? They're going, hey, whatever happens, we have a guy that goes down, we can step up, we can step up and pick up a slack. If we have to deal with the schedule getting changed, okay, we're not going to complain about it. We're just going to deal with the hand that was given to us. You know, one question I have for you. 
this week we heard about Big Ben and yeah. that knee injury. And, ah, oh, he might not play. Might. But if you follow his right. career, we always hear about Big Ben and his injuries and he might not play. Was this anything more than just the normal chatter? This was actually different. It really was. This was not your normal, <laughs> this was, this was oh, my gosh, his, Big Ben's head his, fell off and now he's okay. okay. Right. Oh. Totally different. Actually, when I talked to Mike about it the other day, I said, is this just Ben? He goes, no, no, this is actually... I'm not actually sure. A couple of days ago, he said Ben's knee had stiffened up. He had another defensive back, had the same thing. That DB ended up, he, he uh, deactivated him today. And it wasn't until yesterday they had a walkthrough that Mike said to me, okay, he's good to go. But he actually wasn't sure until yesterday if Ben would be okay to go. But obviously, you see him here. He is active, and he's playing. You know, one question I do have, you want to look big picture here. Their defense has been really, really good all season. Tony, though, I mean, they lost Bud Dupree, who is having a stellar year, done Love. for the season. They've already had to try to overcome the, the loss of Devin Bush. At some point, do you get too many guys that you got to try and make up for, or can they do it? I, I think they can do it, okay? You know, when you look at it, it's, it, it is that one guy, though, but at the same time, they can't just be one player dependent on defense. When you have the number one defense in the NFL, that tells me that that thing, is, that whole side of the, of the ball is loaded. And you got a guy like T.J. Watt, who's, you know, tied for, I think him and Aaron Donald right now are tied for the sack leaders. The, and Minka Fitzpatrick, these yeah. guys will get after you. They are very good on that side of the ball. I think what probably hurt this team the most and what hurt Mike Tomlin the most and losing Bud is that you got Bud and Watt on opposite sides, and, and that's just constant yeah. pressure for a quarterback, and it's, it's something that you can't create or generate. You know, those are generational type of talents, and you just need a guy like Bud out there, so he'll be missed. They do get Stefan it back from the COVID list tonight, so maybe that'll help out a little bit. All right, let's get to the picks. Washington and Pittsburgh. Really simple question. We'll start with you, Tony. Will Pittsburgh win tonight and remain undefeated? Uh, Big Ben, isn't that a clock over in Europe somewhere, right? Yeah, over in Europe. In London, yeah. yeah. London yeah. or something like somewhere, that. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, well, it's time, okay? Yeah. Most famous rock in the world, world there, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win this football game. Keep up that perfect record. <laughs> Big Ben, my man, I think they get the run game going. You know, I like the receivers. I like the offense. I like the team overall. I'm going with Pittsburgh. Big Ben Parliament, right, Tony? Yeah. I, so you guys are both going hey, Pittsburgh. Kid. Every time we all pick the same thing, yeah. the other team wins. Yes. Yeah. I'm going Pittsburgh. We'll yeah, good for you. Yeah, How about you say, go limb, huh? Pittsburgh wins, but Washington put yeah. up a heck of a fight. Don't tune this one out. Yeah. I think it's going to be no pretty doubt. good. If these guys wind up being right and the Steelers wind up winning, they will officially clinch a playoff spot in the AFC. Now, if Washington wins, they'll keep pace with the Giants for the NFC East League. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the 4-7 Washington football team and Alex Smith. They're in the running in the NFC East. It's Monday Night Football on Fox. Hey, you never know when we're going to play. It's 2020, right? Welcome to the broadcast booth. Daryl Johnson, three-time Super Bowl champion, is my partner, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. So the Steelers are unbeaten. They're 11-0. They come off a win against Baltimore on Wednesday, and Mike Tomlin was angry about it. <laughs> so the question is, can they play better? Not only Mike Tomlin, but also Ben Roethlisberger. And I think that's fine. You know, you're happy to have the win, but you're not happy about how you perform. And to me, that's the greatest time to really kind of dig into your team after an ugly win. Let's reset the standard because everybody wants to be playing their best football in the month of December, and the Pittsburgh Steelers definitely are not. They're going to have to improve on a short week. Meanwhile, for Washington, look, we showed you the record. They're four and seven, but they're right in the mix in the NFC East. You pointed out they are ascending, but now they get a real test. Well, this has been kind of fun for me and you because we've kind of been on this journey with the Washington football team. We've seen them get better from week to week. The one area that Ron Rivera would like to see him get much better in is the start of the game. He wants them to be able to control the flow. They're coming off their best performance of the season. Alex Smith is going to get his wish. They're going to get to see a measuring stick against this Pittsburgh Steelers team. A measuring stick indeed and then a win and they can equal the Giants on top of the NFC East. The Steelers 11-0. They are undefeated looking to stay that way on a Monday night in Pittsburgh. Kickoff on Fox. Coming up next. Man, look at him. Uh, He's in a lot of pain. Something is not right. Ben Roethlisberger will be out for this season. This could easily have gone dead like dead patient. You know, can I go play quarterback again? Can I push it that far? And here we go. 693 days later, coming back on an NFL football field. And one or the other could be the NFL.
NFL Comeback Player of the Year. As for this game, Alex Smith said the most important thing for him is to come out and be decisive, make smart, quick decisions, and get that ball out fast because the Steelers' defense will be coming, and they feast on negative plays. Back to you, Kevin. Uh, Pam, they certainly do, and we thank E60 and Ben Roethlisberger for those powerful images. There is, as Pam said, only one comeback player of the year. Alex Smith's journey has been chronicled. It's amazing. But remember, Roethlisberger was out just about the entire year last year with elbow surgery, and he is having a terrific season. As Washington has won the toss, they will defer on a Monday night from Pittsburgh. And here we go on Fox. As that'll be taken out of the end zone, and so we get to see Roethlisberger first as the Steelers take over on offense, and it's a little bit different <laughs> of a Ben Roethlisberger this time around. It really is. You know, you go back to early in his career, and, and the things you remember are the courage and that strength in the pocket and guys hanging off of him and him still making throws down the field. This is a timing offense now. Get it out. Get it to your playmakers. Let them get yards after the catch. Right, four, nine, Let's five, see how frustrated this defensive line for the yeah. Washington football team gets when that ball's coming out quick. And so the Steelers playing their third game in 12 days. Start from their own 25. And Roethlisberger to throw with a lot of time and going to throw it deep. High up in the air for Washington, but it's well out of bounds. And it's incomplete. Darby had pretty good coverage. And that's the one thing that the Steelers have not done well this year, go deep. No, and, and I think you play to your strengths, right, as your personnel. And, yeah, they've got a couple of guys who can get down the field, a little double move right there. But Ronald Darby plays it perfect, and then the ball just kind of drifts out of bounds. But that is going to be the key tonight. You see the pressure right up the middle by Jonathan Allen. Second down, four-man rush. Roethlisberger goes far side of the field. It's complete. Ray Ray McDonald has the catch. And McDonald gets out to the 31. He picks up six yards. Going against this Washington defense, which is excellent. Very good. All starts with the front. The key today will be the linebackers and the secondary tackling well. A couple weeks ago, they played the Cincinnati Bengals. Similar style of offense. Get the ball out quick. Let your guys run after the catch. Washington struggled tackling that afternoon. They have to be much better this evening. Steelers six in the NFL on third down. This will be a third and four. That's Ebron in motion to tight end. Roethlisberger the throw, quick throw, it's Ebron making the catch and coming up short. It'll be a fourth down and one. You talked about tackling, that was a good quick hit and a wrap by Bostic. Yeah, tight coverage on the outside right there. Cameron Curl in coverage, John Bostic turning and getting the hit, showing the blitz. Walked up into the middle and then coming back, there's the contact right there. Good getting his forearm in there, not going helmet to helmet. And so a three and out as the Steelers Bring on the punt team in Jordan Berry set to punt it away. Steven Sims Jr. back deep to receive for Washington on a 34 degree night tonight. High, deep, spiraling kick, and Sims will call a fair catch as Washington will start from their own 13-yard line after a 53-yard punt, and we get to see Alex Smith. Look, it's it's one thing chronicling his journey all the lake surgeries the possibility of losing his leg I mean he went through it all it's one thing to come back it's another thing to be in position now to lead this team to the playoffs which he is and it was really strange as I mentioned at the top we, we've been a part of this journey the whole season for the Washington football team and I just had this very strange feeling early on that at the end of the year Alex Smith was going to be in charge of this offense and they were going to be pressing for an opportunity to get into first place with the NFC East And on first down, Smith looking to throw it and does so over the middle where he's got a completion to who else? Terry McLaurin for a first down. And McLaurin in his second year has turned into a flat out star. And he is the one guy you got to stop, but every week he puts up good numbers. It's amazing. Every defensive coordinator we've talked to before this game is said we can't let 17 get started. He gets the first catch. Antonio Gibson coming off a three touchdown game on Thanksgiving against Dallas and not much there. 
dealing with this Pittsburgh defense, which Daryl is basically number one in everything, and, and that's a good thing for them. They are ferocious, but they lose Bud Dupree on Wednesday to an ACL. He's a huge piece of their D. That is going to be the biggest thing for us to keep an eye on this evening is, is how does that impact not just the pass rush, but the run defense. Antonio Gibson, you mentioned, coming off a great game last time out. On second down, Smith over the middle, incomplete. And his receiver that time fell down. He was trying to get it to Isaiah Wright. And so you see that man right there. It's Alex Highsmith, the rookie out of Charlotte, who has played some this year, but this is a different beast tonight. Completely different. He's never logged the number of snaps that he's going to log tonight. And, and remember, there's always a trickle down with a guy like Alex Highsmith. He's a core special teams guy. How do his snaps on the defensive side of the ball as they increase impact special teams where his role will be reduced? J.D. McKissick checks into the backfield for Washington. He's their second leading receiver on a third and long. It's a four-man rush. Smith can't find anyone. Dancing away from trouble. Now gets it out into the flat. Still work to do for Sims, who's going to be shoved out of bounds a little bit short, a yard short. And it'll be a fourth down and one. Now look at the big smile from Alex Smith. Watch Marcus Allen come in here, 27. Nice job, another good clean hit right there, but just really good pocket presence by Alex Smith climbing up. And that was one of the things that the Steelers talked about. We're not worried about Alex Smith climbing up the middle. We worry about him going to the outside now. Well, you may want to adjust that because that was a nice job going up through the middle and then getting outside. Yeah, that's the one thing he hasn't really done in these last few weeks now as starter after Kyle Allen got hurt. So bottom line, fourth and one, each team going three and out here and Tress Way will punt it away to the very dangerous Ray Ray McDonald. McDonald has the most punt return yards in the league. This is a short kick. McDonald slips, though. Now we'll take it on the bounce. And he is in trouble there. And hold on a second. We get whistles. And I think he signaled for fair catch. That's why. So there you go. And so the Steelers will have the ball. So each team going three and out on their opening possession. Ben Roethlisberger and the undefeated Steelers on the field with that offense. When we come back. Pittsburgh in a really long time. And Pittsburgh just hasn't lost in a really long time. There you go. Ron Rivera, Mike Tomlin, the coaches. Rivera in his first year. Tomlin never had a losing season not going to have one this year that's for sure the seals are start off with a run play and that is going to get nothing to snell who should be featured today again with connor james connor still on the COVID list to ron payne and jonathan allen a big problem in the middle of that washington d yeah and, and even though you know pittsburgh is not really focused on the run game it's not a big component and there's a lot of people that are concerned about that down the stretch here but it was going to be a tough day running into this Washington front anyways. I, I, the guys inside are phenomenal. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and then right now Tim Settles in there as a rotational guy who's excellent too. That's McFarland who checks into the game. Rookie out of Maryland. Lines up as a wide receiver. Roethlisberger looks his way, now comes up the other way, looking to get a little bit of a screen going to Juju Smith-Schuster, but nothing doing. He'll get nothing as Kendall Fuller right there. And we just saw that short pass right there. And let's not forget what we saw in the opening series. We saw a deep shot on the outside, double move. And, you know, maybe when we talk about playing to the strengths of your personnel, you know, you look at Ben Roethlisberger's numbers on, on 20 plus yard throws down the field, struggling a little bit. He's got some touchdowns, so he's catching a few explosives from time to time, but not very consistent with his completion percentage. And some movement there. We got a penalty flag on a third and ten. Full start. Offense. Everybody but the center. Five yard foul. Third down. John Hussey being specific. And there is a center today, by the way, GD Hassenauer, who got his first NFL start against Baltimore last week. Played well. Marquise Pouncey also on that COVID list and not playing for the second week in a row. So whether it was actually the center or everyone else but the center, that's kind of the deal. So J.C. Hassenauer in there again. Third and 15 for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger looking, looking, throwing. He's got a completion. No incomplete. 
Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver, could not hang on. Would have been a little bit short anyway, and the Steelers will punt again. Well, a nice job by Washington's defense recognizing the screen pass right there and clogging that up. And then kind of some old vintage Ben Roethlisberger, the scramble, the throw, and you can see right there Juju Smith-Schuster just lets it slip through his hands. And there's a penalty on the field, Daryl, at the 15-yard line. An eligible line. member of the offense downfield illegally. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Which normally happens when you do take a long time, as Roethlisberger did. So the Steelers' offense a little bit discombobulated. It's the first time all year they've opened up with two three and outs to start a game. And remember, they're coming off a game where they weren't exactly crisp offensively against Baltimore. Barry to punt it from his own one yard line will step on into it this one a line drive rocket Sims backing way up to the 25 Sims the outside gets a block there's a penalty that one looks like it's coming back and so Washington will have the football 59 yard punt and Sims had the eight yard return but that may be moving backwards if I'm a special teams coach this would drive me crazy it's so simple do not block the man if you can see his name that means you're behind him and it's going to be an illegal block in the back and I just just lay off have trust that your guy is going to be able to make the play so you know right there James Smith Williams has just got to be smarter and the rule number one if you can see turn. the name illegal block in the back receiving team number 96 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. So see the name, don't shove in the back. Didn't work there. So Washington with the penalty, but their defense off to a good start, forcing two, three and outs. And now the second opportunity for Alex Smith and a little Pittsburgh on a chilly Monday night. 34 degrees, the undefeated Steelers and the Washington football team. Alex Smith has taken over now, making his fourth start in a row. And the offense has been better with him in there. Three and out on the first possession. Here is Gibson. Good run. Antonio Gibson. First down and more all the way out to the 39-yard line. And so Gibson with a quick 13-yard run coming off a big three-touchdown game against Dallas. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for Antonio Gibson has been acquiring patience. And, and really, we had kind of a, an epiphany with him during our conversation this week. When he played at Memphis, he got a couple of touches here and there. So he was always pressuring to do something big with that play. And, and that's bad news for Washington right there with him kind of limping off a little bit. But now he's realizing he's going to get a lot of touches during the game and he's not pressing as much. So Peyton Barber comes in and running back the blitz and it gets to Smith. Roberts Belaine came in untouched. They sent two, one got home in the first sack of the day for Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, and watch how Robert Spillane does this. He's going to watch Peyton Barber, right? So here he is in the center. He's going to keep his eyes right here. As soon as Peyton Barber commits the block, I'm free to the quarterback. That is what Pittsburgh does to you. They continue to add until they get to the quarterback. Yeah, Mike Tomlin told us, hey, if we're getting there with four, fantastic. If not, we'll add five. If we need to add six, we'll add six. <laughs> By the way, that ties an NFL record. 69 consecutive games with a sack. The old Tampa Bay Bucks in 2003 did that. Here is Smith back to throw. Oh, what a handed catch. And a splendid catch it was by Logan Thomas, who was met up at the 37-yard line after a gain of eight. 69 games in a row with a sack. That's just unbelievable. Hey, that, that's years. I mean, <laughs> that's consistency, you know, for a long period of time. And let me tell you what, Logan Thomas, you know, people trying to figure out who he is. All right, he's, he's not an old college quarterback. He's an NFL tight end. That's an outstanding catch, and I'm, I'm hoping to have the opportunity to show you how physical a blocker he has become for this Washington run game. Another third and long for Washington. Third and 11. Five down, five down, five down. Smith has time. Looking, growing underneath, and there's some work to do, and they're not going to get there. They get it to Thomas again, but he's going to be well short of a first down, and Washington will have to punt it away. Missed opportunity right there because they had they had plenty of time in protection. The Washington offensive line did a great job. There was a twist in the front by the Steelers. They blocked it well, and, and Alex Smith was going to be able to hold that one for a while. No, no need to, to get rid of that one quick. It's a dress way. We'll punt it away. Pressure on way, but he gets it off. 
McLeod penalty flag as well and McLeod with a fair catch and we get a flag near the putter that could be running into but that's going to be close too. personal foul well, there you go roughing the kicker receiving team number 27 15 yard foul automatic first down. And so Marcus Allen, the penalties on him, and well, maybe Tresh Waite should head to Broadway after this game because he helped a little bit of the acting there. Bottom line is it gives Washington a first down. Yeah, not, not a whole lot of contact. And you, know, you, you got to, there, there's a block point. There's an area you're going to go to. And, got him. And I think, yeah, he did. He did. You know, he doesn't let him land, right? He's in the air right there. He's got to be able to land. He makes some contact there. So w w without a doubt, a good call by John Hussey and the crew, but but I think a little bit. I think there's a little bit of influence there. So right? listen, he, that replay clearly got him. You hit the plant leg, it's a 15-yard penalty. But, you know, if you could add to it, you do it. They continue to work on Antonio Gibson, their leading rusher. So Peyton Barber is in the game at running back. So Washington after the penalty, good field position here. They give it to Barber, and it's interesting after a one-yard game. It's not like... They want to take Gibson out, but Ron Rivera told us the other day, I I've been dying to get him more opportunities. Yeah, he's your, your gritty, dirty yard guy. I mean, he's going to be in the four-minute offense. He's your short yardage, goal line runner. He's become that physical presence in the backfield. And, and from the very beginning, this was going to be running back by committee. Antonio Gibson right there has is, is kind of taken it and really, uh, you know, been the guy, the lead guy. But they've got uh, a couple other guys in there that can be very productive. Blitz coming again. Smith gets rid of it quickly. Knocked away on the near side. Looking for Cam Sims, but Cameron Sutton was all over him. That's a great job. It, you know, you can bring pressure, but that's going to force you to play man. And when you can play man to man, this tight, you know, th that's the whole thing. The offense did a really nice job picking up that blitz. They had plenty of time, but that is just great coverage on the outside by Cameron Sutton. Cameron Sutton plays a lot anyway, but Steven Nelson, their starting cornerback, is out today with a knee injury. There you see the key inactives. Also, Boswell, the Steelers kicker, is out today. So they make a call to the practice squad. Another third and long, a third and nine this time. Smith being chased by Hayworth, throws it on the run, has a completion again to Thomas, but it's going to go nowhere. No gain as Hilton is right there on the tackle. Tonight's professional grade presented by GMC. Way out to punt again, fourth down and eight. This time the Steelers don't get pressure. McLeod, another fair catch, and does so up around the 13-yard line. And now a penalty. There's some shoving back at the 40-yard line. After a 28-yard punt, Kalik Hudson and Jordan Dangerfield with the two parties involved. It's an emotional game, Kevin, but you've got to be able to manage your emotions. And I think Kalik Hudson could get a penalty right here because Jordan Dangerfield just frustrated the heck out of him. It's a lot of discussion here. John Hussey and his crew. Holding, kicking team number 47. Pittsburgh has elected to take that 10 yard foul from the succeeding spot. First down, timeout. We'll take a timeout too, 527 to go in this first quarter. Washington and Pittsburgh, scoreless. And we're gonna show you Mr. Spillane as the Steelers on a blitz, just kind of snuck in there. And got Alex Smith, 69th consecutive game with a sack for the Steelers defense. In this game, though, 
sluggish how you describe the offense so far not much doing see sacks by season no team has ever led the NFL in sacks for consecutive years that's what the Steelers are trying to do as they start out on first down and they will run it to McFarland and not run it anywhere as Holcomb is there on the tackle for the Steelers team and, and I know look their offense maybe a little bit off kilter the last couple games but it was interesting talking to Mike Tomlin who said you know it's okay they could get through it because of what they went through last year yeah and, and when you lose Ben Roethlisberger for the entire season early on you got to play a different way and you, you just mentioned you know how they how good they are defensively at, at sacking the quarterback and taking the football away that became part of that mantra last year defense was creating short fields the offense was doing a great job killing the clock at the ends of games in the four minute situation Washington with a late blitz is picked up Roethlisberger has a man Washington holds it in right down the seam for a first down Washington with a big pickup he's got 30 yeah, and just found a soft spot vertically you, you saw him go in motion he's going to press it out now he's going right up the numbers Ronald Darby just a little bit of a stutter right there don't know if he felt like he was going to break to the outside but always want to protect that deeper throw down the field Washington led them in receiving last year, but they're so deep. He's like the fourth guy right now, but Roethlisberger went to him on that big third down conversion last week, and he trusts him. And he delivers with 30 yards there as they will run it here, looking for McFarland, and that's the first nice run of the day as he gets inside the 44 pickup of seven. Just mashing everybody up in the middle, getting those double teams, getting a push on, and then letting Anthony McFarland find that open space and take off. Second down and three. McFarland again tries to get around the edge and he can't get there. He is stacked up. Deron Payne was in there. He had some help as well. It'll bring up third down. But a nice job by Montez Sweat. We talk about him as a pass rusher as well. Watch, he's going to come up the field, number 90, and he's going to see that run back inside. He slows him down a little bit, and that's the one thing you'll see from this defense, especially on the interior. Their pursuit down the line of scrimmage. If that play gets strung out, there's a lot of big bodies coming from the inside out. These two teams combined are 0 for 5 on third down. We'll see if that works on a third and short Roethlisberger coming near side and it is incomplete tried to get it to Deontay Johnson but could not bring it in bounds and a fourth and short what do you do looks like they're going to punt it away well, you're putting three guys to one side of the formation and then on the back side you've got Deontay Johnson who's drawing single coverage from Ronald Darby so right now by formation they're creating an opportunity to get the ball down the field on the opposite side in the one-on-one. -on -one. But we've only really seen that effective one time so far in the game. Well, we told you these defenses. Obviously, the Steelers number one in the label. Washington comes in seventh, and they are playing that way in this first quarter. Uh, Smith, fair catch inside the 10. So. 32-yard punt, but Washington has a long way to go. Alex Smith, 2-1, and one, back at the hill as a starting quarterback. And now Washington with their uh, least pleasing field position yet, backed up way in their own territory against this dominant Steelers defense. They'll start at the 9. And again, Peyton Barber remains in the game at tailback. No Antonio Gibson. On first down. Get it to Barber. Looks for a little seam, and there is not much there. For more on Gibson, downstairs we go to Pam Oliver. Well, Kevin running back Antonio Gibson, slim chances of him coming back in the game. In fact, Washington says Gibson is doubtful with the toe injury. Huge loss for them. He was a big part of what they were hoping to do offensively, of course. Back to you. Oh, that's a game changer. It really is, and that could be something that could be an issue the rest of the season, not just for tonight's game. And, and, and let me tell you what, turf toe? Like, it's it's a throwaway designation. That's a hyperextension of the joint in your big toe. It's very, very painful and can stick with you for a long time. Emotion Barber out. Here is Smith over the middle and in and out of the hands. And incomplete. As Wright had his hands on it, couldn't haul it in. It'll be another third and long. Every one of their third downs has been at least eight yards so far. 
And they've got to do exactly what the Pittsburgh Steelers did on their last possession. Did they get any points out of it? No, but that 30 yard completion to James Washington helped flip the field. Washington had great starting field position their first two possessions and now Pittsburgh has flipped the field on them. Can they stop them here? Third and eight, four-man rush, quick throw, dropped again. That one would have been a first down for sure. Steven Sims had the pen, could not hang on. And so a sloppy series for Washington, and they will punt it away yet again. Wow, look at all the green grass. Steven Sims has in front of him right there. Great release. He's going to have the first, yards, first down yardage and more on this play if he can hold on to it. Big drop right there. And so now Way will punt it out of his own end zone. Ray Ray McLeod back to receive. Sorry, Ray Ray, called you McDonald earlier. We know it's McLeod. Way gets it off with that left foot. McLeod circling under a fair catch. Call for and he's hit at the same time. And the ball is loose. And Washington has recovered. There's a penalty flag. I think they have. There's a penalty flag way back at the 16 yard line. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be anything called on Danny Johnson because he was blocked into Ray Ray McLeod. You can see there's separation right there, but Justin Lane had blocked him out that way. So I don't think there will be a flag on that collision right there. Holding. Receiving team number 92. That 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Timeout. So with all that, they do retain possession, but they'll be moving back after the penalty. See if anyone can move the football. We come back. We're scoreless. First quarter from Pittsburgh. Steelers have the ball. We'll show you it after what all transpired. So Pittsburgh did recover the muff. It was a clear muff because he got blocked into. We'll show you after this play. And with the penalty, the holding, here is where they start. From their own 28 with Roethlisberger. Blitz is coming, gets picked up, gets the throw off to Ebron, who's got to try to leap over people. He's got a first down, but there is another penalty flag. So we have to wait and see what that is all about. So let's see this penalty, and then, Daryl, you could take us through what happened on the punt as we went to break there. I yeah, was figuring. Holding. Defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Yeah, so let's go back to the punt. Now, we're in break, and I'm like, why isn't it Washington's football? Well, it's not Washington's football because Jeremy Sprinkle does not know how to recover a fumble. I, I thought number 87 had it right there, and I turned my eyes off the camera, and then all of a sudden you look up, and, and the play's being made in there by Sean Davis, and they get the ball back. So that that is an opportunity for Washington to have recovered the fumble and had possession right there. Think about it. They had the drop pass on third down and then that. As Roethlisberger surveys the field and underneath throw again, getting Ebron involved. And a quick four-yard gain to Ebron. And that'll be something interesting. You see how Ben Roethlisberger likes this matchup. You know, at the line of scrimmage, he has a lot of flexibility and control at the line of scrimmage. And one of the things he wanted to see was how is Washington going to cover Eric Ebron? He's just a big wide receiver for us, and we feel like we can get some favorable matchups. Blue 20. There he is in the slot. Roethlisberger looking the other way, though, and a good catch by Johnson, who kind of goes backwards after making the reception. They're going to mark him at the 50-yard line, so he's going to be a little bit short as Kendall Fuller was on the coverage. You know, this team, they are loaded at wide receiver. In fact, you're talking about 400 yards receiving plus four touchdowns this year. Go across the board. You get it. Claypool. Johnson, Smith Schuster, and Ebron in there. And don't forget Washington who had a 30 yard catch before. They are loaded and they are young at the position. Of course, Ebron, tight end receiver, however you want to classify it. Third and one. Steelers will run it to Snell, who has got it. He does enough to move the chains for Pittsburgh. And the first time a third down has been converted all quarter long. And that is the end of the first quarter from Pittsburgh. So. On a chilly night on a Monday evening. Got defenses reigning supreme. No score with the Steelers on the move. 
sledding today with a couple of top 10 defenses, and that's exactly what we've got. Six punts and six first downs, essentially. Steelers just converted the first third down of the game. We start the second quarter, and a scoreless contest. No team has even gotten inside the 40. Here's a quick throw. Get it outside. It is caught by McLeod, and Washington all over. McLeod is actually going to lose two yards on the play. And, and when you motion your tight end across the formation, you, you saw Washington slide with it. So you, you're bringing more people to that side of the ball. Here's your motion. You know, look at your linebackers. They're all they're all clearing a gap over there. So you're just you're bringing more bodies play side. Washington hustling to get subs off the field. They'll do it. On a second and 12, it's a four-man rush. Roethlisberger incomplete. That one came in hot to Deontay Johnson. He couldn't haul it in. And so it's interesting. The, the Steelers, you think of the Steelers really all time. You think about defense, which they have. You think about running game, which they really don't. Do they need it? I think so. I, I, you want to be balanced. I, you know, we talked with, with Ben Roethlisberger. 51 attempts against Baltimore. You know, that, that's that's very lopsided. That's one side. And, and just a couple of years ago, this was a two tight end, two running back, one wide receiver kind of personnel grouping. They could come in and they, they could pound the football. They've lost a little bit of that here in 2020. And I think they need to rediscover, rediscover it here down the stretch. Third down, blitz coming. Complete for a first down is Johnson. He got away from Kendall Fuller to pick up 17, and they convert on third and 12. Nice job just getting the, again that side of the field where you're being able to create the one on one and that one there is is well timed with the route snapping out of the route the ball is already on its way. So a couple of third down conversions on this drive. Roethlisberger throws again near nearsighted Snell who catches it lined up as a wide receiver that time and he's inside the 30 so Randy Feekner is the offensive coordinator here he's been the organization a long time and we were asking him about it do you need it you know the run game that type of thing and you know he went back and forth he said but I do value the fact that I have a hundred million dollar quarterback <laughs> and that's the way they're playing that's how they're built they're not necessarily built for this smash mouth team with the personnel they have right now no his two rules protect the football protect the quarterback always he's got a very good offensive line uh, he, he's got great skill players and, and this is their best opportunity to move the ball effectively Quick throw, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Deron Payne got his... Uh, he, he's got great skill players, and, and this is their best opportunity to move the ball effectively. Quick throw, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Deron Payne got his hand up on that one. And that's what you have to do when the ball is coming out quick. If, if you're not going to be able to get to the quarterback, as you're coming in, you've got that clock in your head, and once you're getting close, elevate... Try to get into a throwing lane and get a deflection. Steelers bring in Jalen Samuels. And he now motions into the backfield. Third and five. Washington backs off the blitz. Roethlisberger going to loft one for Ebron. Goes up and gets it. First down, Steelers. Just kind of floated it up there for 15 yards to Eric Ebron. Yeah, but I, you know, just kind of a real soft spot. Watch here, you know, Cameron Crow right there, 31, really kind of playing the flat. There's no reason to play the flat right there. You know, maybe drift a little bit back, kind of squeeze that that opening so it makes a more difficult throw for Ben Roethlisberger. And so Ebron, the leading receiver, four catches, 35 yards. Steelers in the red zone for the first time today, where they've been good really all year, but they weren't good last week. Quick hit, Johnson has some blockings. Deontay Johnson inside the 10, works his way down near the five. Well, this is finally a, a good play design. They actually got the two guys up on the point you know, to be able to get some block, to create some separation for Deontay Johnson. 
Washington has done a good job up until this point when they've gone with these bunch, bunch formations and kind of done this quick bubble screen. You can see the strength after the catch, and that's the big thing about this wide receiver group. All of them are very good with the football in their hands after the catch. They line up Chase Claypool by himself at the top of your screen on a second down and two. Roethlisberger looking the other way. Now looking around, tries to find it. Johnson again gets hit, diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. There's a penalty on the far side of the field. So hang on. An, el an eligible member of the offense, illegally downfield, number 78. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. That's what happens when the timing gets mixed up. Alejandro Villanueva is expecting that to come out on the first pump, and it's not there, so Ben Roethlisberger holds it. Well, he's already got the clock in his head. He's down the field blocking, and that one's coming back. Yeah, you, you get a yard. I mean, he was about six yards down the field, so that wasn't even close. And he might have been a viable receiver in the round. Could have, maybe he wants one to come his way. So instead of the touchdown, make it a second down and seven. Twelfth play of the drive. Four-man rush. Roethlisberger over the middle, going end zone, incomplete. Tried to fit it in there to Ebron. Pretty good coverage by Bostic and Everett. Boy, you try to fit this one in. This is. This is a heck of a throw by Ben Roethlisberger. They got a shot at it. Watch as he's going to go inside and then up vertical. Look at the small window onto the back shoulder. It's there. Eric Ebron just got to make that catch. That, that's an outstanding throw by Ben Roethlisberger. Look at that window. There's nothing there. And is it really? It's kind of a, a defensive play. Maybe as a Washington defender comes across and kind of gets a hand and knocks it out. And so it is a third and seven. They don't have to score. They can get a first down. At the four. Pumps. Roethlisberger now throws far corner. Claypool jumps up and holds it in. And that should be a first and goal. He goes backwards a little bit. They've got to spot that. There they do. And that will be a first and goal. Well, let's credit the offensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers right now because Ben Roethlisberger held this for a long time. Ronald Darby's got to be able to cover for a long time. I mean, look at this protection going against a very, very good Washington football team defensive line group. To your point, Roethlisberger hasn't been sacked in 18 quarters. Think about that. That's how good they've been. First and goal. Back to throw, coming near side. It is caught for the touchdown. Johnson gets it anyway. Get you either way. We've talked about how the ball comes out quickly in some of these bubble screens. And now here's a nice timing throw right there. You can see it's a good sell by Deontay Johnson with his eyes. Kind of lulls Kendall Fuller to sleep a little bit. And then the quick break and the ball delivered on time by Ben Roethlisberger. So Johnson had the touchdown, which was taken away by the penalty. He gets one anyway from three yards out. And a new kicker for Pittsburgh, the NFL debut by Matthew Wright as Boswell is hurt. And Wright's first try puts it up and through. So the Steelers get the offense going. This was a beauty. A floater to Ebron on third down. They go to Shotson from three yards out. Steelers converting a few third downs for them on the drive. Unbeaten Pittsburgh. Talked about the run game. Do they need it? Apparently not. 13 passes. One run on the drive. Four for four on third down. Roethlisberger heating up. And it's 7-0. Steelers in front. As we saw Matthew Wright. It is first point after try. Again, Boswell, the longtime Steeler kicker hurt. Not playing today. So Wright getting the chance here today. And now it's Washington down seven. Ryan you to start Saturday strong. One of America's greatest rivalries. Headlines, big noon Saturday. Justin Fields and number four Ohio State taking on Michigan. All starts with a special big noon kickoff. Live from the shoe, 10 a.m. Eastern, followed by big noon Saturday on Fox. And a reminder, more football after us on ESPN, Monday Night Football, the one that was originally scheduled. Bills and 49ers, so good Monday night in the NFL. 
Michael watch that one after all. Glad you're with us tonight in movement by Washington. I think Morgan Moses got an early start. Full start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. First down. You know Moses, who's been a really good player for a long time, a right tackle for a long time, has been a great teammate, played left tackle the last couple weeks, but now. Cornelius Lucas is back today number 78 he had an ankle injury Moses back to his right side where he's seemingly more familiar and, and it's been like that all season long for Washington there have been a lot of different combinations in that starting five during the course of the year like that looked like it ran out but instead no flag Smith and there it is yeah that looked like it hit zero and a disastrous start to this drive. Delay a game. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty. First down. You talked at the beginning of the game. Ron Rivera said, boy, we've got to get off to better starts. I feel like the Steelers, there were seven points just getting off the bus, and that's where we're trying to get to. Well, now you're down seven, and you got this. Well, you mentioned it. Two, three and outs for the first time this season by the Pittsburgh offense. They had their opportunity to get off to a good start tonight, and they and they, they missed a big opportunity, and now they're, they're in a big, tough spot right now. A first and 20. Gets a four-man rush. Smith turns it over the middle, and getting Thomas, the tight end involved, out to the 20. And you know, talking about the slow starts, we know it's the second quarter now. But in the first quarter, look, they have gotten, they've had to fight and come back all these times, and making it harder on themselves. And when you're doing that today Tommy, against the number one Tommy. rated defense, not that easy. A Smith to throw it, and looks to get something, but there's not much there to McLaurin. As Alex Highsmith gets out on the tackle, just a two-yard gain. Yeah, showing you his athleticism. And, uh, you, you know, he kind of pops on film a little bit. You know, he got a little bit of spot play behind Bud Dupree, but he's one of those guys in rotation. Watch 56, rushing the quarterback, athletic there to miss the cut. And now he's down the line in pursuit. That, that's Terry McLaurin. He's about ready to get his balance back, and, and he would be gone down the sideline. Good hustle by Alex Highsmith right there. Alex Highsmith, last year at Charlotte, had 15 sacks and 21 and a half tackles for a loss. He can play. Smith under duress, gets rid on time to Thomas. Oh, what a move. Logan Thomas surging forward, trying to get to the first down marker. I think he's out of bounds before it, and it looks like that's the case. Great effort from Logan Thomas. Well, I, I want to see the end of this, Kevin. Let, let's see the end of this. Does he get this stretched out? Watch the effort as he extends the football towards the pylon. Hard to see. We're shielded from it. That's on the near side. Here's a good look, because we're on the near sideline, too. Mm. Well, that, that is certainly close, isn't it? That's a heck of an effort right there. And, and down the line, you know, you, you may be able to piece this together a little bit and, and maybe get Ron Rivera interested, and it looks like he has thrown the red flag out. Yeah, he is interested. He is going to challenge this play. This is close right there. Looks like he should have it. We will take a look, tell you what happens when we come back. Challenge. Quote today. This is the same exact time frame on the tape, Daryl. Show us. Yeah, so you can see that he's still in balance, and let's take a closer look right there. We'll zoom After in on that. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Washington will be charged a timeout, and that will be considered their first challenge. Well, well that kind of catches me by surprise. Uh, me as well. There's the spot again, and if you take a look, we, so we show you he's in bounds, and that, I, I, I'm surprised. Surprised at that. So a challenge is lost by Ron Rivera, so they're charged a timeout. And on fourth down, looks like they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it anyway. So a huge sequence early in this game. And they're going to go with five wide to do it. Logan Thomas under center now. He's going to take it in hand off, and it's a disaster. Oh, the Steelers all over it. Thomas went under center. McKissick took the handoff, and Mike Hilton said, ah, and the Steelers hold. Oh, but I love the play call, Kevin, because they showed this earlier in the year with Logan Thomas under center. Here's the play being made right here. Dontel Inman. 
Dontrell Inman, he's got to recognize that. He's flat-footed. If he gets that block down inside, they're on the edge. I really do like when teams go back and they've shown something and then they take it another step. And that's all Dontrell Inman. He, his eyes were not on Mike Hilton, and Mike Hilton got inside of him and blew the play up. Well, Mike Hilton missed four games this year with a shoulder injury, came back the last two. That's a huge play from him, fourth-year man out of Mississippi, and the Steelers' defense on a fourth and one, and now they set up the offense in great field position. At the 31, up by seven, 9.02 to go in this first half. So that call big, the stand big, try to dump it off, does Roethlisberger, and that is going to go nowhere. Samuels on the catch, Holcomb on the tackle for a loss of four. Yeah, there's one of the guys that's really stepped up. He was not part of the starting lineup early in the year, but Cole Holcomb has gotten his way into that starting lineup and has played really, really well. Nice job recognizing that play design right there and getting up and making a tackle. Hey, three five, three five. Second down. Roethlisberger steps away from pressure, throw in deep. It is caught at the five. Chase Claypool, athletic, going up and getting it. He's got 30, and it's first and goal. And again, it's the ability for this offensive line to keep up in protection. And then we're seeing Ben Roethlisberger kind of going back a little bit of old school, climbing the pocket, taking hits, delivering the ball down the field. So it's a little bit of mix and match with old and new Ben tonight. First and goal, Benny Snell in the game at Set. tailback. They will give it to Snell, dancing up the middle. And He's going to be close down to the one, but it'll bring up second down. Kind of similar to Peyton Barber for the Washington football team. Benny Snell, usually that guy that's in there for the gritty, tough yards when James Conner's the lead guy, but he's done a nice job. And, and Mike Tomlin told us, he goes, I'm very, I'm very comfortable having him being the featured back. Darryl, you're going to be very happy. The fullback's in the game. Derek Watt, number 44. That run, by the way, snapped a streak of 13 consecutive passes. A uh, little fake. Roethlisberger now tries to float it to Snell, and it's incomplete. I know we've got right-handed quarterbacks, but after watching Montez Sweat on Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> I don't know if I want to roll out that way and try and throw over top of him. There's a penalty on the play, by the way. Yeah, right. He had the similar play. If you didn't see it against Dallas, same exact setup. Jumped up, intercepted it, and ran it in for a touchdown. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 97. After this is the goal, automatic, first down. That's on Tim Settle, and a gift for Pittsburgh, first and goal from inside the one. Well, it could be one of the things that Jonathan Allen told us, told us we couldn't have happen to us. We, we can't get frustrated if the ball's coming out quick. Not as the ball only coming out quick, but also what, what is happening is, is Ben Roethlisberger is extending the play, and they're having their opportunities to get sacks, and they are not capitalizing. Blue 80. Steelers go jumbo with the fullback. Snell getting the ball, and Snell gets stuffed. Nowhere to go on that right side as Washington played it well. It'll be a second and goal. These are both very, very good defensive lines. There's a nice play right here at the top. That, that's where the kickout was supposed to happen and kind of clutters everything up there, actually gets down in on the tackle. Steelers go out of jumbo. They bring on Chase Claypool now. Snell, try it again. Snell, not going to get there again. He is close, but Cameron Curl came up from the secondary to stop him. It'll be third and goal. That's a nice job by Washington because watch right here a little sidestep there now you get your momentum and you lower your pad level 
And you can see just a little bit short right there with the football. Well, the Steelers struggled in this area against the Ravens. They, they did not score a touchdown. They were inside the 10 three times on Wednesday to be a third in goal from inside the one. As the Steelers have called a timeout to discuss. Well, we told you football tonight, another one after us, and then tomorrow a special edition of the NFL on Fox. Zeke and the Cowboys take on the Ravens. Lamar Jackson will be back for that one, too. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Also available on the NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. It's a 7-0 Pittsburgh. They're the undefeated team looking to make it 14. Hi, everyone, by the way, on a Monday evening. Good to see you. And so this is a huge play because for Washington, they're not built to come back from 14 down against this type of defense. Now, and you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, you know, is, is it important for Pittsburgh to have that, that physical run game? Well, you don't have to have the physical run game, but you've got to be able to run well in certain situations this is one of them right here and it would go great right with all the things they can do with the jet sweeps it just gives you one more thing to think about but they've really lost that ability to get downhill and get physical what do they do here he carries 12 yards on the ground so far today they go jumbo formation again fake to Snell this time Roethlisberger's gonna throw and it is incomplete they tried to get Gerald Hawkins, who was the jumbo tackle on that play involved. It did not work. And now it's fourth and goal. Oh, Montez Sweat just makes another really good play. Just a smart football player. Watch 90. Watch him drive <laughs> Gerald Hawkins back about five yards on his release. You run that play, usually that guy comes off clean. Right. Montez Sweat wasn't going to let him get off clean. And the Steelers will go. Monumental play. Steelers up seven. Fourth in goal inside the one. Give it to Snell again. And he did not get there, I don't think. He is stopped. Chase Young and company. What a stand by the Washington football team. Boy, you want to talk about athletic ability from a defensive end position the burst in the speed to be able to get there chase young unbelievable down the line what a stand by washington they take over down seven five and a half to go in this first half and washington just made an incredible goal line stand remember after the penalty they had first and goal from the half yard line but now they got to get out of their own zone, which won't be easy. And they're going to try and do that. And Barber barely gets out of it. Maybe gets to the one. So it really has been a tale of fourth downs, right? Remember Washington on their last possession, they had a creative play, but they forgot to block Hilton. <laughs> and that was blown up. So the Steelers had great field position after that defensive stand. And then after the penalty, first and goal from the half-yard line, this was the fourth down play, and Chase Young just destroyed it. Yeah, Eric Ebron just motions too far. As you're coming across that formation, hey, where's 99? He's the guy that I'm responsible for. He got a little bit too wide, and Chase Young came right underneath him. Surprise no quarterback sneak on that one. As Smith is incomplete. Well, they don't have a quarterback that's big enough, you know, to run that quarterback <laughs> sneak from there. You know, he's just a little guy, that Ben Roethlisberger. When you got a guy named Big Ben, you might want to think about the quarterback sneak along the way there. But now Washington has to figure out a way to prevent Tress Way from punting from the back of their end zone. Third and ten. Precarious situation for them. And this is why you go for it on a fourth and goal situation like that, because you have the confidence in your defense to come out and force a stop right here and, gr and get great field position again to start your next possession. 0 for 5 on third down. Smith looking firing he's got a completion of thomas and that time he is not going to be close to a first down hilton again on the stop and here comes a washington punt and they've got to get into some type of rhythm here pretty quick because they're, they're really leaving their defense out there and we talked about complimentary football with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, right now, Washington is not playing that style. They left their defense out there far too long so far here in the first half. Tress Way on the kick. 
good one too. McLeod all the way back to his 31 yard line looking for a block. McLeod breaks the tackle sliding his way through good return all the way out near midfield a 60 yard kick but a 17 yard return and Pittsburgh will start for midfield and we take this moment to get a message from Progressive. Progressive presents at home with Baker Mayfield. Oh no. Hello? I can't feel my fingers! Please! Where's my key? No! Ah. I have a feeling Baker might be making a few more of those commercials after the performance he had yesterday. Well, he, he was feeling his fingers yesterday. He, felt he might them, not felt them there, but... Felt them quite fine. I hate he threw the ball well. I think he watched what Kurt Warner said about him earlier in the day. As a drop-back pass, I don't know about Baker Mayfield, but the play action and everything, you wonder if that got to Baker Mayfield before the game started. Message received. So here are the Steelers after their defense forced a three and out after they were denied on fourth and short. Washington makes a man miss. Still going, maybe all the way. And he's in for the touchdown. James Washington from 50. So after all that, after the stop on the goal line, Washington gets it right back. Yeah, just going formationally, and they're creating that one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. And what did we talk about at the top? A couple weeks ago against the Bengals, running a similar style offense, they did not tackle well. Washington didn't tackle well in space. And again, right there, Kendall Fuller's got this. It's going to be a catch and a tackle right there. Poor angle. James Washington spins out of it. Now you're in trouble. Fourth touchdown of the year for Washington. James, that is, not the team. <laughs> And the extra point is up, and it is good by Matthew Wright. And so a lot has happened. The Steelers were denied on fourth and goal. The defense forced a quick three and out, and just like that, a nice little punt return, one play, and boom, it's 14-0 Pittsburgh. And we showed that graphic before, Daryl, about these receiving weapons they have. And we're talking about Smith, Schuster, and Johnson, and Claypool. And we had Ebron in there, but Washington, again, he led this team in receiving last year. They got Ray Ray McLeod, who Mike Tomlin said he's the jet sweep guy, but you're seeing all the parts here so far. Yeah, and, and it puts a lot of stress on the defense. And, and again, what they're doing is they're putting formation out to one side here, right? And now on the backside, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And your safety's coming from not in the middle of the field, but really kind of playing a little bit heavy to formation on the other side of the field. We've seen them try to get one-on-ones down the field, uh, we, we've seen a number of different approaches right there. That's just a simple, you know, hook route, and it's just a poor job of tackling by Kendall Fuller. And, and that's what they do, right? They stress you. And one of the things that Ron Rivera told his guys in Jack Del Rio, wh what they wanted him to do defensively is, is make them feel your presence. Make sure that they know that you're always around them. They haven't done a good job with that right now. It was something that, that Ron Rivera used to use when he was defensive coordinator for the Chargers against Peyton Manning when he was with the Colts with that receiving group make sure they, they know you're there the whole game here is Johnson on the return Danny Johnson good speed on that return out across the 30 and works his way up to the 33 Let's take a moment to check in with Kurt Menefee hey Mike if I'm not mistaken you had a big game against Washington on the Monday did you I did you also played for Pittsburgh, right? I did. So what do you think of this game so far? Uh, I'll let you know coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show. You're getting good at this tease thing for TV. How about that? All right. Hey, no making fun of my throwing, Moose and Kevin. I'm going to blame you on the catching. Hey, that, that, <laughs> that was a trap right there, that last one, Kurt. Holy, holy cow. That one might be going to review. Here is Alex Smith. Washington has been silent on offense and nowhere to go for Sims. Upended on the play by Mike Hilton. Boy, has he had a first half. It's funny. It, it, you know, Alex Smith said, you know, this defense just stretches you the whole game, your decision making, and, and you tend to be so worn out. By the time you get to the fourth quarter, you start making mistakes. I, I think they stress the whole offense. I mean, they, they've been putting pressure on Washington all across the offensive formation. Hey, 
Four man rush this time. Smith. And good catch in traffic nonetheless. It's Logan Thomas again. He's been active today. Yeah, Terrell Edmonds all over him, but he still hold it in for 16 yards. This is great job. Uh, this is going to be, in my opinion, defensive pass interference. Terrell Edmonds gets there early. I mean, that's just a great job of concentrating and finishing the catch. Boy, he has really developed into a real pro NFL tight end. Longest play of the day for Washington, and that one may have beaten it, if not for a great play. Smith tried to get it to Sims, but Hilton again with a terrific play on the ball. Great job of getting your eyes back to the quarterback, towards the quarterback, to be able to make a play on the ball. Because you can see right there, it, is that ball is coming in. You know, Steven Sims Jr., has, he's gotten behind him. Now Sims certainly had a seam, but Mike Hilton making the play. Second down and 10. Smith underneath McKissick and he's hit right away by Avery Williamson and McKissick picks up a couple you know it's interesting without Antonio Gibson who got hurt so early in this game the the game plan and the 10 are a little bit different for Washington yeah and, and remember you know what the game plan was Mike Tomlin told us hey don't complicate this on first and second down it's it's 24 and 17 well 24 has been out of the game so now you only got to take care of 17 and they've done a nice job of taking care of Terry McLaurin. You know, third down, it's going to be 41 in 17. They may have to start worrying about J.D. McKissick a little bit more than just third down with Antonio Gibson on the side. And we get a whistle. As we've hit the two-minute warning, there is Gibson now walking off. It's a Washington face with a third and long. Every one of the third downs has been seven yards or longer. That'll be the case when we return. Down 14. 14 nothing Steelers in front of Washington two minutes ago in this first half Washington has not done much on offense matter of fact They're 0 for 6 on third down every one of those third downs has been long including this one third down and seven From the 46 Four man rush. Smith airs it out, going deep for McClure and jumping. Cannot hold it in. Joe Hayden on the coverage. McLaurin had a shot. Would have been an amazing catch. And now Minka Fitzpatrick is down for Pittsburgh. Getting vertical, gets in between. And again, we talked about it. We just mentioned the fact that you've got to stop 17, and, and he's actually kind of on top of Joe Hayden. And then we'll try and see what happens is Minka Fitzpatrick 39 comes in right here at the end of the play. It's when a player is injured, we must charge them a timeout. This will be the second charge timeout. Let's see if we can take a look if we see anything. And so Fitzpatrick up and onto the sideline by himself. So that hopefully is a good sign for the Steelers. As Alex Smith taking a shot, trying to get McLaurin involved. Two catches, 14 yards for McLaurin, who came in fifth in the NFL in receiving yards. And now it'll be another punting situation with Pittsburgh already up 14 to nothing. And Ray Ray McLeod back deep. And a fair catch, and the Steelers will start at the 10 with one timeout to go in the half. Well, moments ago, you know, Alex Smith, this is uh, this is him before that last third down play. Obviously, it looks like blood of some sort. Not sure the origin. If you're wondering, it is not the leg where he had the 17 surgeries on. That was the right. This is a, still bizarre. I'm not sure what would cause that. But they taped it, and he went right back in in that play. Yeah, and you wonder because of the, the timing situation where we are here at, at the end of the first half, it, 
you know, you, you get him in at halftime and we'll take a look at it a little bit closer and see what it is. But I, th that was a lot of blood on, on the lower part of, of that legging that was there. And, uh, you know, hopefully they get a, an opportunity at halftime to take it, a, take a look at it and get it covered up a little bit better than just a, just a little bit of pre wrap. He didn't seem that concerned. He was pretty relaxed over there on the sideline for it as Jalen Samuels gets the carry. And maybe a yard there. Let's see if we could see. Maybe he got a cleat there. Oh, that's probably it, right? Mm. Getting spiked a little bit. Maybe that was it, but again, he looks like he's not really too concerned over it. What he would be concerned about is his team down 14 to nothing. Minute 16 to go in the half. Roethlisberger quickly fires far side of the field. There is Johnson. It's out to the 17 with time ticking away. It doesn't look like the Steelers are in too much of a hurry right now. Don't forget coming up the Verizon halftime report. Kurt, Tony, Michael all there from the studio and Michael Vick talking about the Steelers receiving core. We've seen them all on display here tonight. James Washington has a 50 yard touchdown. Deontay Johnson has a touchdown and five catches. Juju Smith Schuster is the one not to get involved just yet. One catch and no yards. So take a look around the league from yesterday. The headlines we told you about Baker Mayfield, a four touchdown day. Patrick Mahomes in the 300 yard passing game. Chiefs had a tough one with Denver one. And then Derek Carr basically got Greg Williams fired today. Williams with an all out blitz for the Jets on the last play. Kind of mind blowing. He hits Henry Ruggs for a bomb for a touchdown to win it. Wild finish there in the Meadowlands. 104 to go in the half. Third down and three. Three man rush. They get Juju Smith Schuster involved. Bounces to the outside, trying to get to the marker, and I don't think he got there. It is close. And looks like that spot he will be a half a yard short. Yeah, and, and credit that to DeShazer Everett right there, 22, who came in at the end. I think Juju Smith Schuster is going to break that tackle and be able to get enough yardage for the first down. Watch 22. Come in and finish this off because Chase Young is sliding off the tackle. Now, it looks like they're going to call for a measurement here. I think that was a pretty good spot. I mean, we, we saw that odd spot on the Logan Thomas play where he was still in bounds and extended, and we, we thought that he had. He had got enough yards for the first down, and that led to the fourth down that got stuffed by Mike Hilton. And then Pittsburgh went down the field with that. That one there, to me, looked like it was a little bit short. It was it was not close to the 20 when DeSager Everett got there and knocked him out of bounds. Uh, I would agree with you. It, I thought he was a little bit shorter than that. That, the nose of the football, is basically touching the 20-yard line. And that looks like it's going to be a first down. We'll see when they stretch the chains out. Got at least a football and a half ahead of where it looked like he went out. Let's see if it's enough. Mm, not quite. I mean, by an inch. <laughs> the shades was like, yeah, that, that's a terrible spot. I, I got Juju out at well before the 20 yard line. Does it make sense to take a chance when you're up 14 nothing in your own territory like this? Well, let's go back to that fourth down. They couldn't get it, you know, down there on the goal line, and, and Washington's defense stuffed them. So, you know, you're, you're up 14. I, I wouldn't. I'd punt it and, and go in at halftime and see if, you know, is Washington going to be able to get down the field and get any points? But you don't want to give them a short field right here. Well, especially because Washington offensively has 86 yards. So that's what they've done so far. But here's the situation. If they do actually go through and punt this, 58 seconds left. They do have one timeout. I guess Alex Smith is just fine out there warming up like it's no big deal. It's a scratch. That was a little bit more than a scratch, I would say. I know I'd be out for the game. Well, I was thinking maybe get him into the locker room a little bit early, but if you'd have done that, you'd have missed this opportunity right here with one more possession.
Sims going to let this one go. And Washington will have decent fuel position with 50 seconds left and one timeout. So you look at the playoffs as we get closer and closer here. Week 13 coming to the end of that. Well, the Saints have won nine in a row. The Chiefs 11 and one. They have clinched right on the heels of the Steelers, who would clinch a playoff berth with a win tonight. But it's, it's really about the number one seed. That's the one team that gets a bye now with a new format with seven teams. I'm not a fan of that either. You know, I'm actually, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, giving the entire league a week to recover and bringing all eight teams in that first week. I, I've never been a fan of just the one seed having that that bye week. I, I think it's a huge advantage when it was number one and number two for those two teams. And, and to do it with just one team in the playoffs, I think it's a huge advantage and, and it should be leveled. Best starting field position of the day for Washington. Make a Fitzpatrick back in for Pittsburgh, by the way, in the secondary. Here is Smith. Quick hitter, it's Sims. Cam Sims at the first down. Breaks a tackle and a stiff arm. Still going inside the 40, down to the 30. Cam Sims breaking a tackle, got a block from McLaurin, and a 30-yard gain. Yeah, Terry McLaurin just does everything that you would want from a football player on your team. Watch the block right here. Great effort by Cam Sims, you know, extending this play, and 17 is going to come in and throw a, a key block on Minka Fitzpatrick right there. Get him to the corner and get him about 15 more yards. Smart. Gets himself in a position where he's not going to be having a, a risk of creating a penalty. And so now Washington in field goal range, although this is no gimme. This end of the stadium, always windy. And Smith will try to get it out to McKissick, who makes the catch and speeds his way inside the 20 for another Washington first down. And he goes out of bounds with 35 seconds left. For an offense that has struggled the entire first half, that's, that's two nice plays back to back for Washington. 17 and 41, right? The, the, the one combination that Mike Tomlin was concerned about in these types of situations and you can see why right there the 89 you know chipping in with a with a catch and run but McLaurin just doing a really good job away from the ball well they had under 90 yards of offense and they just picked up 41 yards in two plays that is a four-man rush getting out to McKissick again and there's not much there run out of territory rather quickly by Justin Lane 30 seconds to go in this first half Washington's been pretty good in the red zone on the year. They're eighth in the NFL. First time they're here tonight. Blitz coming. Smith standing in. In trouble and dropped. Second sack tonight for the Steelers. It's the league leader, T.J. Watt. And there's that definition. You know, we're just going to keep at until we get home. Two, four, six blitzers that time coming in with your four down and then adding a little bit more, whatever it takes to get to the quarterback. And, and credit Washington's offensive line tonight. They've done a good job handling. That was just so many bodies coming at them and well timed coming off the edge. Yeah, I love when you ask Mike Tomlin about the pass rush. He said it is required. And they usually deliver. And that one was timely because Washington was on the move trying to sneak in a late score. Obviously still in field goal range. And they will get the second half kickoff. And now this is a daunting third down where they're only <laughs> 0 of 7 on third. This is a third and 16. It will be a 42-yard field goal from right here. Pressure up the middle. Smith is dragged down for another sack. Stefan Tuitt delivers. That's his eighth sack of the year, and now time is winding down. I'm trying to wonder why the, the clock stopped there. It's now on the way down to zero. Why did it ever stop? 
Or why did they never just put it into play and then step away? They never allowed Washington the opportunity. They, the half is not over, please. That was so bizarre. I mean, they, they, it's like they the wouldn't let Washington. stopped due to administrative issue. The K-ball was not near where we needed to bring in. As a result, the ball, clock was stopped so we could spot the ball. We will wind the clock on my ready. Well, it's a huge break for Washington. I'm not sure they would have been able to get that kick off. And now they have to get set and ready to snap immediately. Clock operator, please put eight seconds back on the clock, please. Eight seconds. Wow. Now let's see if they can capitalize. It will be a 49-yard field goal for Dustin Hopkins to get Washington on the board. And Hopkins is up, and it is good. There's a penalty flag, too, though, so hang on a moment. A strange ending to this first half. Pittsburgh defensive front slid and did that get somebody from Washington to jump illegal formation receiving team number 97 Washington is elected to decline that penalty except the points there is still one second remaining on the clock there is still one second remaining on the clock please what's good to Dean Blandino a rules expert in LA Dean can you take us through what just happened there yeah, it was tough to see exactly what happened. John Hussey did announce that they had an issue getting the K-ball into the game, and that's why the clock was stopped. In that situation, when the offense is out of timeouts, you really don't want to waste time and bring in the K-ball. Whatever ball they're playing with, put it down, make sure they're set, and get out of the way. And obviously, it worked out in Washington's favor with the clock stopping. They were able to get set and kick the field goal. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. And, and at Dean's point is, Daryl, I, you know, I, I don't know that they get the kick off. Yeah. It, oh, oh, you see what happened here? It looks like did 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 Alex take the ball with him off the field? I think so, and that and that's probably why, to Dean's point, that in that situation that's short on time, you can't just use the the ball that was the, the on ball the previous was gone. Play. Yeah, Alex had taken it with him. That. So that is exactly what happened. So to Dean's point, maybe they would have used the regular ball, but it wasn't there. He left with it. That is a crazy sequence. Well, it worked out for Washington. I know Steelers fans won't be happy with that. One second left, and they'll just kind of squib it to let the clock run out. Watt will fall on it, and that will be that. So. An interesting first half to say the least. Couple of touchdowns for Ben Roethlisberger as the play of the first half brought to you by State Farm. How about Roethlisberger to James Washington breaking a tackle and going all the way from 50 yards out. Deontay Johnson has a score as well. And at the break, it is the Steelers 14 and Washington three after that crazy end of the first half. But Washington, remember, will get the ball to start Half number two, Kurt and Tony and Michael, the Verizon Halftime Show comes your way in a moment. Brought to you by Progressive 14 to 3 Steelers in front of Washington as we get set for this third quarter. Washington did not do much on offense, but they got that late hold on defense and then a couple big plays set up the field goal by Hopkins to get on the board and now they get the ball to start the third quarter. I think the question is this down 14 to 3. 
Does Washington have enough without their top running back against this number one overall defense? That is going to be the hardest part. Without Antonio Gibson, that was the big part of this game plan. Getting to the edges and, and really without Bud Dupree on one of those edges, it, it was even a better opportunity. When he went out, that really had to shift things for offensive coordinator Scott Turner. He's got to go in a different direction. Who do you lean on now in the running game? And, and you're probably going to have to switch it a little bit to be more inside than on the edges. Danny Johnson let that one bounce was thinking maybe he would go into the end zone it did not since so now Washington will have to start from deep in their own territory we take a look at the quarterbacks here tonight Roethlisberger 198 yards couple of touchdowns and Alex Smith had a hard time getting going but uh, got them in field goal range at the end and now we'll see what he could do Logan Thomas had the big half for Washington receiving wise seven catches 53 yards. Terry McLaurin, their number one guy, who you know the Steelers are focusing on, only two catches for 14 yards. Smith on first down. A short game. We get a penalty flag flying as well to get McLaurin. Try to get McLaurin there. And we'll have to see what the penalty is. Illegal use of the hands, offense number 76. 10 yard penalty, first down. Correction, half the distance. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't think Morgan Moses had his hand on there for an extended period of time. Did he get there? Yeah, but it looked like he got it off and then it was kind of a hook on the other side. I, I'm, I'm not sure that we really had the illegal hands to the face on that play. Unless he, you know, that, that was the extended period there as he came around and you kind of lost sight of it. He's got a better perspective from behind the quarterback than we do from in front. And Washington looked like they buckled there and there was a flag. Full start. Offense number 82. After this is the goal. First well, they could have called that on anyone. It's on Logan Thomas. Let's go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Yeah, without running back Antonio Gibson, Washington trying to figure things out offensively. Ron Rivera had a couple of ideas. He said, first of all, stop hurting ourselves with those penalties. We also need some completions, he added, but it's pretty obvious stuff gets some points on the board. As for Pittsburgh, hey. Head coach Mike Tomlin telling me we want to play in concert in the second half as Daryl often talks about complimentary football. And a quick underneath throw, and it is, I think, caught <laughs> by Sims. <laughs> kind of caught it between the legs, and he has it for a four yard game. Well, I tell you right now, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are doing what Ron Rivera challenged his guys to do. They are all over the receivers for Washington. I mean, it, it, there, there is nothing easy. There is nothing. And that, there's your definition of nothing easy when it comes to catching the football right now for Washington's football team. Catching it with the knees. Just how they taught you. Second and 19. Alex Smith, quick hitter again. Gets it out to right. Who leaps over Hilton, one defender, but then is going to be brought down immediately there. Another short gain. And it'll be third down and long. That's been the theme for the evening tonight. Washington just not being able to stay ahead of the chains. And that's one of the things that Mike Tomlin talked to us about. He goes, you can tell, you know, they're coached by a defensive coach with a background. Uh, they want to stay ahead of the chains. They, they want to stay into the third manageables. And, and they haven't done that tonight. You know, Pittsburgh has forced Washington, Washington into a lot of third and longs. Yeah, and because of that, they're 0-8, 0-4-8 on third down. Got to get all the way out here to the 28. Four man rush, trying to set it up to Sims, looking for a block or two. Sims makes a move. Cam Sims has a first and more. Cam Sims, another big play. He had the 30 yard reception near the end of the half to help set up a field goal. That one's good for 31. But, and watch the offensive lineman here, because it doesn't look like there's much there. Brandon Sheriff right there, 75. Chase Rulli, a 73. Look at how they get down, stay continually pushing to help out Cam Sims, and they turn it into a big play. Daryl, they're dying to find a second option other than Terry McLaurin. And Sims had a big game a couple weeks ago against the Giants and then wasn't even targeted against Dallas, so but he's had a big effect here today. And they try it to McKissick running to the edge, and he gets there. 
J.D. McKissick known more for his receiving than rushing. Just his second rush of the day, and he's got eight yards. Ah, that was a nice play call right there. They actually caught Pittsburgh in a stunt. Pittsburgh was stunning back to the field, and they had the play called that way, so they were able to get onto the edge pretty quick right there. So watch, watch the defense is going to move this way with their stunt, and that gives the leverage to the offensive linemen, so able to get on the edge pretty quick right there. Second and two, little zone read, and Barber is going to muscle his way for a first down. You know, it's interesting when you talk about what Pam said about Gibson and, and you know how you adjust, right? And Gibson's a guy who likes to get to the edge, and maybe one cut and get to the edge. Well, Peyton Barber is not, so. I don't know, is McKissick the way to get to the edge a little bit? Yes, I, I think so. Um, you know, he just has that that style about his his play. And if you're going to try to replace Antonio Gibson, which you're not going to be able to do, I think J.D. McKissick gives you the best simulation of what your original game plan was going to be on first and second down. They're just going to go right up the middle to Barber and try and use that strength getting inside the 40 to pick up four. But some real positives right here, right? Pam talked to Ron Rivera at halftime. Hey, we got to stop hurting ourselves with these penalties. They come out, they have two penalties. Right. The first two plays. They get backed up on their own end. They have the big third down conversion, and now they've got their momentum back trying to get into a rhythm. So uh, th this is a nice bounce back for Washington because I, I thought that they were going to be stuck backed up, and Pittsburgh was going to get the ball back in good field position again. Ready! Seventh play of the drive, pressure coming. Smith sees it and it may be deflected at the line as he had heavy pressure. Oh goodness, and that is tough to see. Robert Spillane clutching that knee, and he has played well. Remember, he took over for Devin Bush, who tore his ACL a little over a month ago. And he's been really good in the middle of that defense. He got the deflection too, and now an injury timeout. I tend to Robert Spillane. And hopefully that's a good sign. That that would be just very unfortunate for the Steelers. I mean, Devin Bush, Bud Dupree, now Robert Spillane with a knee injury, all the linebacker position, struggling through the same type of injury. So hopefully he's okay. And so Spillane is out. Steelers go to a dime defense, so they replace him in the secondary. It'll be a third down coming up for Washington. Steelers show blitz, but they back off. Smith goes underneath for the first down. That time they get it to Steven Sims Jr., and all of a sudden, here is Washington converting third downs for the first time all night. Getting those completions. And that's one of the things going all the way back to early in the year when it was Dwayne Haskins as the starting quarterback. Just take the easy ones when they're there. Let's get some completions. Let's get this offense into a rhythm. Let's go, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Avery Williamson has come in for Robert Blaine, by the way, number 51. They're going to get it out in the flat to Sims. What a tackle. <laughs> Who else? Mike Hilton has been everywhere for Pittsburgh tonight. Another tackle for a loss for him. And, and let me tell you, this is more impressive than the Dontrell Inman. This is Logan Thomas. He's a very good blocker. He's their guy that does long traps and, and goes inside and does a lot of the dirty work. And Mike Hilton fights through that block. Mike Hilton has six tackles, two tackles for a loss. He's got a pass defense, remember, on that scene play down the middle. What a night for number 28. Makes it second and 12. Smith going to air it out, has a man. Thomas hauls it in and bang down at the one. Logan Thomas held on in traffic for 30 yards, and it's first and goal. Working with J.D. McKissick on that side, they just completely turn him loose. I think Cam Sutton's trying to adjust. I would have guessed that it would have been Terrell Edmonds' guy on the inside. First and goal, McKissick tries to sneak in up the middle, not going to get there. Inside the one where he's stuck by T.J. Watt. Logan Thomas just gets better and better and better.
I, I, he is he's exceptional. I mean, you talk about the tight end position. We saw Chase Young do it. There's T.J. Watt showing that he can come down on the run game from the outside spot. But I agree with you, Kevin. Logan Thomas is he's boy. He's having a heck of a game. He just gets better and better every week. Smith looking for Cam Sims, who could not hang on. He was bobbling the ball and then went out of bounds. It's ruled incomplete. He had it initially. It looked like six. Really nice job by Joe Hayden right there, continuing to fight through right at the point of the catch, getting his hands on the football and preventing Cam Sims from completing it. And you see on the replay, clearly never had it at the beginning. And so a third and goal for Washington is Hayden on the coverage. Smith rolling. Can't find anyone. Looking to throw away. Really nice job by the Steelers defense switching this because you're playing man-to-man -man coverage and you motion in and there's no way. Watch him switch right here. The little bump right there on the pick. So you switch it instead of trying to stay man-to-man -man coverage. Good job defensively right there. Joe Hayden and Mike Hilton again. And so both teams having trouble at the one yard line today and much like Pittsburgh did, Washington has decided they will go on a fourth and goal. Peyton Barber in the game in the backfield. The fake to Barber. Smith rolling again. In trouble. Throwing. Incomplete. Flags fly everywhere. And maybe that's it. Yeah. T.J. Watt on the hold on J.D. McKissick. Holding. Defense number 90. Five-year penalty. Automatic. First down. So it's like a replica. We saw the same thing when the Steelers were down there. They got the penalty, had a first and goal at the half yard line. And now Washington will reset the downs first and goal from the one half yard line. I say on the first play, you give Peyton Barber a shot. Let's just let's just run it between the tackles and see if we can get in there. You know, we're getting a little bit too creative in these situations right now. Let's, let's just see if if Peyton Barber could just grind it out for you. They do bring Barber in with three wide receivers. And they will listen to you, Daryl, and it will work. Touchdown, Washington. Sometimes you get down there and you, you tend to overthink things a little bit. Some some good plays get, trying to get stuff out on the edge, but what Pittsburgh was doing an outstanding job. And so let's just go back to what's tried and true. Nice double team between Chase Rooley and Brandon Sheriff right there. That, that, that's where you need to go. Just get right in behind those two guys, and they do a good job getting some push on the down guy and then climbing up to the second level. And so all of a sudden, Washington has gotten back in this game. Here's Hopkins. Try the extra point, and it is up and good. And with 8.16 to go, the Washington football team with 10 unanswered. Logan Thomas with a big catch down to the one. Remember, Washington converted a third and 16 on this drive. Then they got the penalty and then the touchdown of Peyton Barber. It's a game. 14-10, Pittsburgh. The penalty started off. They were backed up. They had a third and 16. And then Cam Sims, who converted two third downs on that drive. Then the big pass to Logan Thomas in traffic down to the one. And Peyton Barber put it home. And all of a sudden, it looked like the Steelers might pull away up 14 and nothing. They were pretty much dominating, but Washington is back in this game here at undefeated Pittsburgh. And it feels like the Steelers' offense hasn't been on the field in forever. Well, they have it between this and the half, and there you go. Hey, this week, NFL players wearing customized cause-inspired cleats for My Cause, My Cleats. Visit NFL.com slash my cause, my cleats. Hear the players' stories, bid on their custom cleats for charity, and learn more about the causes they're supporting. It takes all of us to be part of a movement for the greater good. So now, how do the Steelers answer? And Roethlisberger, two touchdown passes in the first half. His first possession here of the second half. 
Make the throw, get it out to Snell in the flat. Tries to make a move on Holcomb. And he doesn't go very far out across the 25-yard line. I, I tell you, this defensive line, they are relentless. I mean, Chase Young, you know, the athleticism, you know, he's upfield pressure on the quarterback. He's downfield chase. And there's Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen just collapsing everything from the inside. Four-man rush, quick release from Roethlisberger, and a drop from Ebron. Drops were a big issue last week. They've had a couple here today. It, it's been a recurring theme throughout the season, and it, it's, it hasn't been, you know, kind of offense-wide, but there's been one or two guys during the course of a game throughout the season that's just had the drops, and it, it spread through everybody here today. We, we've seen multiple guys with it, and it, it's cold on the... It's tough to catch cold footballs. It, it gets a little slick. You got to concentrate on it a little bit longer. So with that, makes it a third and nine. Blue 80. Blue 80. Stunt by Washington. Roethlisberger on target. And the catch is hauled in right near the first down marker. Maybe a little short. A penalty as well from the secondary. So Juju Smith-Schuster with the catch. The marking is he's going to be about a half yard short, and there's a flag. So let's see. Holding. Defense, number 20. That five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Now the Steelers will take that. It's on Jimmy Moreland. So he's right here, and he's the guy that makes the play on Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't I didn't really see it. It, it. We've got that one where you get a handful of jersey and it pulls away and that's an automatic. I, I really didn't see the hold right there on that play. I thought it was played very tight, very close, like Ron Rivera asked his guys to be against these receivers tonight. And it gives Pittsburgh a first down. Roethlisberger now they're gonna make him pay. Smith Schuster involved again, but great away he's taken down, and there's Moreland who just got the penalty call with a nice tackle. And I tell you what, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in that locker room because they are playing much tighter. They're doing what he wanted them to do in the first half that they were unable to do. Make the wide receivers feel your presence in coverage. Let them know you're there. That's two plays in a row. Jimmy Moreland's had really, really tight coverage on Juju. Second down, ball is loose, picked up by Snell, and it's going to be a big loss. Montez Sweat was there to cover it up, and it's a loss of four. And that's really the first time we've seen J.C. Hassenauer have an issue with the snap. It, it, <laughs> was he trying to snap it to ben, Benny Snell Jr. on that? Was it, was it going to be a direct snap? Sure, it looks like Ben's ready for it, but just a bad snap right there for the first time. Yeah, Hassenauer playing again for the second week. Marquise Pouncey on the COVID list. And it makes it a third and 13. Blue 20. Blue 20. Roethlisberger stands in, throws incomplete. That would have been nowhere near a first down even if Johnson held on. The Washington defense does their job even after the penalty on the secondary. I tell you, if the, the receivers for the Steelers don't start making some clean catches, watch all the Washington defenders around this football. It's middle of the field. You drop it. And they're going to have one that's going to stay up in the air long enough. And, and with these guys being a little bit tighter in their coverage, you can see Jack Del Rio is excited about how this defense came out to start the second half. Barry set to punt it away. High booming kick. Sims calls a fair catch and has to get down on his knees to get it and does so right around the 35 yard line. Well, well, well. The undefeated Steelers have themselves a fight on their hands tonight. Washington down four. Their football in the third. Microsoft Surface, the official laptop of the NFL. Heck of a game. The unbeaten Steelers leading. The Washington football team 14 to 10 Washington did nothing at the beginning Ready. of the game but at the end of the half they got it going for a field goal had a 14 play drive to start the third and they got it now down by four and that goes nowhere to Barber maybe a yard if he's lucky 
injury update. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Yeah, Kevin, word on Robert Splain's injury. The Steelers report the linebacker is questionable with a knee. Splain wears that green dot on his helmet. The injury means Vince Williams is next up to make calls for the defense. Yeah, so Williams in there now, and Splain's been so good for them, replacing Devin Bush. Meanwhile, for Washington, Brandon Sheriff is down now. Their three-time Pro Bowl guard. Just when their line is trying to get a little continuity, right? And, and now you potentially lose him. It's unbelievable what's happened to the offensive line positions this season for Washington. I mean, it just, it, to your point, you know, once they get a little bit of consistency, you know, here comes Brandon Sheriff. And, and his return when he missed some games early in the season, his return back into the starting lineup is really kind of when this whole thing started to come together for the offense. And there he is coming in from a right side of your screen tough to see what happened I don't know if he if he got kind of a collision maybe a, a knee into the thigh hard to tell you talked about it he missed three games earlier in the year with a knee injury Wes Martin who started the year at left guard and then lost that job now over at right guard see if the Steelers can look to exploit that Second down and nine. Four man rush. Smith pressured and delivers complete across the 40 that time as McKissick on the receiving end. Bring up a third down and short. Uh, the one good thing tonight for Washington is, you know, we talked about, well, what's your other option besides Terry McLaurin? He's only got two, catch or two catches for 14 yards. Logan Thomas, 83 yards on eight catches. And Cam Sims really kind of chipping in, stepping up. Three catches for 65, so we'll see how those guys play out. And, and now you're starting to see J.D. McKissick become a bigger part of this offense as well. And yeah, McLaurin all singled out, bottom of the screen now against Joe Hayden at a third and three. Smith, pressure coming, throws it away, I think, or is it a fumble? Steelers have recovered as the fumble, waiting for a signal. And it's Pittsburgh football. Alex Highsmith has it. T.J. Watt was in around the quarterback. Now we'll see if Smith actually had a forward pass or not. And now they actually change and say incomplete. There's also a penalty flag on the field as well. Well, it looks like the hand has to come forward with a little bit of control of the football, right? And it did, according There's to... There's no foul on the play, and the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Fourth down. So everything you saw there didn't happen. <laughs> and, and right, you know, what you do is, okay, Brandon Sheriff just went out. Let's see if Wes Martin's ready for this. And, and they've got St Stephon Tuitt over top of him, and he's driving him back, and as Alex Smith goes to get away from that pressure, unfortunately, he runs right into T.J. Watt. Has come at you with so many different angles, and so the Steelers' defense with a big hold there, and they'll get it back up by four. Four thirty to go in the third. It's Ray Ray McLeod waiting back deep for his turn. McLeod bobbles, recovers, up across the 15, and then tripped up coming near side. That looked like it had the makings of a big return, but Jeremy Sprinkle was there on the tackle. So you like defense, you like cold weather, you like undefeated teams. Well, then you like this game. Steelers up by four. Rocket can. Ah, a little holiday feel. On a Monday night on Fox. I like that. A shot of the Steel City in Pittsburgh. It feels like Christmas feels like football for the undefeated Steelers who get the ball back up by four and they give it to Benny Snell who gets to the outside. And actually that was McFarland that time. We get an injured Washington player. It's Cameron Curl, the starting free safety. And he's slow to get up. The injury is starting to take their toll a little bit in this one. So here are the Steelers, 11 and 0. Obviously, got a few more to go, trying to 
join that momentous list getting through the regular season unbeaten Mike Tomlin you almost take him for granted right I mean he, he has done such an incredible job the Steelers have never had a losing season since he's been here best winning percentage in NFL history how about Papa Bear Bill Belichick Don Shula and Mike Tomlin and people say he's under the radar because he had success early when he first got here to Pittsburgh <laughs> go look at his career he had success early he had success in the middle he's had success towards the end I mean it's just you don't get to that point unless you've been incredibly consistent throughout your career as a head coach and you think about honestly the job he did last year might be as good as anybody I mean I mean they had everybody playing quarterback last year with Roethlisberger hurt and they were eight and eight yeah so the ability to, to, to say I've never had a losing season I've never been the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers in a losing season I agree Kevin the eight and eight from last year in 2019 could possibly be his best coaching job he's done throughout his tenure here then the playoffs eight of his 13 years hired at age 34 and then of course the youngest to ever win a Super Bowl there is the great George Hallis talk about the youngest or the coaches that have been undefeated of course Don Shula in 72 went through all the way Bill Belichick and the Patriots they were 16 and 0 and then as we know lost to the Giants in that surprise in the Super Bowl no our Michael Strahan's not working tonight but he's still <laughs> smiling somewhere I know that Michael and so that is what Mike Tomlin is trying to do get on that list meanwhile Cameron curl goes out for Washington so Jeremy Reeves will replace him number 39 Thomas Davis in the game right now three-time Pro Bowler in his 16th year on a second and one for the Steelers Dropless burger with a quick throw over the middle and in stride it's Johnson beauty of a quick hitter to Deontay Johnson up to the 41 he's got 14 well, you're so used to that football coming out quick with one of the guys taking a step back off the line <laughs> you know, Jimmy Moreland's like well, where's the guy there's usually another guy here behind the line of scrimmage yeah he's gone <laughs> they, both, they both went downfield on you you know since week nine Deontay Johnson coming into today 32 receptions been a major force it was second most in the league see his numbers tonight Roethlisberger with a pump thing backs away from pressure and now a flag flies and it's incomplete going for Johnson again holding offense number 66 10 yard penalty first down that's on David DeCastro Pro Bowl right guard so it's funny Daryl you know we've seen Roethlisberger we've talked about the old and the new right and Ben said look you could slice it however you want to slice it you know it's not totally new and you know, then you talk to Randy Feekner the offensive coordinator and he brings up a funny story from years ago when Bruce Arians was still here in Pittsburgh and he said you know Bruce said hey you got to go talk to him he's getting sacked too much you got to have con of course Bruce didn't have the conversation <laughs> no he sent Randy to go have the conversation so Randy did he said hey we got to change things up get the ball a little quicker said Ben didn't talk to me for a week here's Roethlisberger they're talking now by the way over the middle and that is caught by Ebron who backs his way out across the 35 and they went out and they beat the Patriots and then they came in Monday and Ben said oh hey coach you realize you didn't speak to me at all last week yeah yeah but, but he said he goes listen it's not the first time you know the coaches are always trying to work with me to kind of change some certain things with my game plan and he, I think he understands he's at a point he's at a point in his career where his health is more important and, and you could not play the way he was playing early in his career at this stage he's playing great I know that second down and long Roethlisberger another drop Ebron's had three of them here tonight right in the bread basket and he can't hang on it's third and 14 now yeah, they're not even making Washington tackle I mean they're just so many of these we've seen and again they're right they're right in the middle of the field and, and, and that's the scary part you have so many defenders around you one of these pops is going to get picked off by Washington the five drops tonight for the Steelers against seven against the Ravens now third and 14 this burger pressure coming on loads and he's got the first down Deontay Johnson found to seam and Roethlisberger found him and it moves the chains well it, you, you move the linebacker because the running back is going to come out and, and he's going to become a part of it 
and you force right there it's Thomas Davis he's the one that steps up that opens up the lane for Ben to find Deontay Johnson but really the best play in the passing game tonight has been Ben Roethlisberger on the move at living and getting the ball downfield Johnson seven catches 69 yards now and that touchdown I mean Washington is relying heavily on their down four to get pressure and they're just not getting there they need to think, start thinking about adding a blitzer and tipped up in the air and incomplete I consider that the sixth drop of the day and so that's my follow-up. So when do you consider that? I mean, they've been rushing four almost the whole game. Well, it, it really hasn't hurt them, right? You're 14-10. You're I, I think your biggest fear is we, we bring pressure. We probably don't stack up real well man-to-man -man against this receiving group. And maybe the case of the drops kind of goes away at that point. And, and you get a big play down the field. So, you know, make them work all the way down the field because right now they are not playing clean football in the passing game. Get it out to Jalen Samuels. Oh, good move. And another Jalen Samuels. Shaking his way down to the 39. He's got eight. Now that, that's the important thing about playing against Pittsburgh in this new style is, is you have to be able to tackle. There's one miss. There's your second miss. You, you finally get him down. But, you know, that, that's plus seven. Brings up a third and two. Again, a four-man rush. Roethlisberger going to float one for Claypool. Can't make the play, but a penalty flag. Kendall Fuller on the coverage, and that sure looks like it's going against him. Pass interference, defense number 29. While he plays the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Yeah, the infamous underthrown deep ball, where if the defender does not get his head around to be able to track the football, you have a great opportunity for a collision and a defensive pass interference, and that's exactly what happened on that play. Claypool, the rookie out of Notre Dame, has been great. Led the team in receiving coming into tonight. And so a 14-yard penalty back to first and ten. Snell. Working that left side, not much, if anything. As he stacked up there by Casey Tuhill. And taking us what looks to be to the end of this third quarter. Oh, Washington committing the penalties. Pittsburgh happy to oblige. And they've got a couple touchdowns from Roethlisberger. You see the run game hasn't been much of a factor. But on the move, up by four. Ninth play of this drive. Roethlisberger, a lot of time incomplete. And he's looking for James Washington on the play. And it'll be a third down with seven seconds left. And again, still sticking with that four down here, playing a little bit tighter coverage. And Cameron Curl, remember we saw him get hurt last series, has come back in the starting free safety for Washington. Keep in mind, Steelers, we told you earlier, they've got a new kicker. Chris Boswell is hurt, so he is not up today. Matthew Wright, who was on the practice squad, making his NFL debut tonight. So even though this seems like field goal range, no gimme. On third and ten. They rush four yet again. Roethlisberger, now some pressure. We'll just shuttle it away to Ebron. Makes a man miss surging forward inside the 20. And he's going to be a few yards short of a first down. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Pittsburgh up by four. Likely field goal try when we come back. He's trying to remain undefeated. They've got the lead on Washington and looking for more. This is Matthew Wright's first NFL field goal try. He's got a couple extra points tonight. Out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, went to UCF, 24 years old from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and now trying to hit his first field goal. It will be a 37-yard try to extend to a seven-point lead. 
Snap and hold are good, and Wright is up, and he has got it. And so the Steelers up by seven after Wright's first NFL field goal, and now this from Lowe's. 800 South Mint Street may not be quite as full, but don't count out all 800 Mint Streets just yet, even though this one needs an expansion. And this one, some added security. For these groundskeepers. Chill the game! For the fans at home. Christian, you've done it again. For all of us, we'll be working together to put the home in home team. And so, Matthew Wright feeling pretty good. We had a couple point after tries tonight, but his first NFL field goal try is good from 37 yards out, subbing for the injured Chris Boswell. And it's the Steelers, 17 to 10, as we just begin this fourth quarter from Pittsburgh on a Monday night. Glad to have you aboard, along with Pam Oliver, Daryl Johnson, I'm Kevin Burkhart, Pete Machesco, our producer, Artie Kempner, our director. Johnson looking to get to the edge cuts up field and a nice return out to the 30. So Ron Rivera told us the other day we're four and seven. I thought we'd be better. Now's their chance to prove it. Yeah, they had that uh, that six game streak that he really kind of focused his team on and they went three and three during it. Um, you know went for the win against the Giants went for a two point conversion late instead right. of kicking the extra point. And, and going into overtime, lost by three on the next time around. I think that that's what he's talking about. Those two New York Giant games would have left them at four and two, would have given them the upper hand down the stretch here. Uh, but you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out. Here is Smith firing, and boy, into some traffic there, and it's caught by McKissick, and he turns it into a nice gain of seven. It's Georgia Monday Night Football coming up on ESPN. After us, Bills and 49ers, that should be a good game. As McKissick fitted in there. Give him six yards on that play. Brandon yep. Sheriff, by the way, back in the game. Their Pro Bowl right guard. That's good news for Washington. Here's McKissick on the carry. And the ball is loose, and it's recovered by Washington. Came out there. Logan Thomas hopped on it. It'll be a third down. Oh, uh, T.J. Watt is right there. He's the one that strips it out, and, and he's got the best shot at it. Look at the hustle by Logan Thomas. I mean, that looks like it's going to be T.J. Watt's fumble recovery. Uh, again, he just had a heck of a night. He, he's doing everything right. I mean, he's got some production from a statistical standpoint, but then all the other stuff away from the football, right there, right next to the football, a great fumble recovery. Washington only two of 12 on third down. It's a third and four. It's a four-man rush. It's Smith over the middle. Of McClure can't hang on. It's incomplete. Minka Fitzpatrick on the coverage, and Washington will punt it away. Well, they, they just know how dangerous Terry McLaurin is because Cam Sutton is the guy that's in coverage, but he's always got a safety that's looking down on him. And, and that time it was Minka Fitzpatrick. At other times, it's been Terrell Edmonds. He is not getting single covered during the course of this game. They always have a little bit of help over the top for Terry McLaurin. Yeah, they've done a great job on McLaurin. Only 2 of 14, 2 for 14 today. Came in fifth in the league, receiving yards. So it's another punt by way and a cloud will let it bounce and it takes a Washington bounce and a really good one look at this to roll all the way down to the 10 and that's where it'll stop Pittsburgh football yeah, it's been fun tonight each team under 300 yards you'd expect the two top 10 defenses and the Steelers trying to remain undefeated They've got the football up by seven. The ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. My goodness, is Montez Sweat good at that? And he did it again. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be an easy throw for a right-handed quarterback, but I just think number 90 might want you to go out to the left every once in a while. It's pretty funny. A little <laughs> chatter there, too. You see Roethlisberger's numbers. You know, we talked about Roethlisberger changing styles maybe a little bit, but Daryl, in his 17th year, 
He's got the best touchdown to interception ratio of his career. 53, Ben. Second down, firing. It is knocked away. Tried to get it to Juju Smith-Schuster, but Everett came over the top to knock it away. This, this is a tough throw here because he's got John Bostic underneath it, and, and he's got safety help over the top with DeShazer Everett. And, and again, just lucky that there's not another interception here. I mean, between John Bostic and DeShazer Everett, they, you know, that, that's a better opportunity for Washington than it is for Pittsburgh. Heavy, 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 man, heavy. Yes, that's it. Blue 80. Blue 80. Third and 10. Four man rush. They're going to run it to Snell, and that is a disaster. Deron Payne was all over it, so they've pretty much refused to run it this entire game, and they choose to there, and it does not work. And a punt situation coming up. Well, they've been rushing the passer so much, you, you think you're going to get him, you're going to catch him. But Deron Payne, number 94, there's a little twist right there. And again, it's J.C. Hassenauer that kind of struggles with that game, that twist as it comes around to his inside. And so with three and out, that lasted under a minute. And now Barry punting from his own end zone. Someone's calling for a holding call. Smith, or Sims, excuse me, makes the fair catch. And Washington down by seven. Good field position, though. So, a little talk between Roethlisberger and Sweat. Pittsburgh lead. Washington, though, closing in. As Pittsburgh up by seven here in this fourth quarter. But the best starting field position of the day for the football team. We'll run it here. Run into the middle of the teeth of that Pittsburgh defense 4-3 with Barber right into Avery Williamson. <laughs> T.J. Watt always around the ball, right? A few tackles, a couple quarterback hits, a sack. He leads the league in sacks. He leads the league in quarterback hits. He leads the league in tackles for a loss. I mean, you get the idea, don't you? He's unbelievable, and now he's doing this tonight. He's having a great night statistically again without Bud Dupree on the other side, and that was one of the concerns is when you've got two dominant edge rushers, it's hard for an offense to defend both of them. What would Washington do with just T.J. Watt being there? Pressure against Smith. McKissick, what a throw. McKissick on the cross, upended right around the first down marker. They're going to mark him a yard shy. It's a pretty electric six-yard game. That, that, that is one of the best throws I've seen Alex Smith make since he's been back as the starter. I mean, drifting to his left with a receiver running away from you, I mean, hits him in stride. And so a third down and one for Washington. Two of 13 on third downs here tonight. Barber gets it, and Barber's got it. Though so they give it to the hammer, Peyton Barber for the first down. And just kind of building a wall up there, and then Peyton Barber kind of finds that little space out to the right. And it looks like Joe Hayden, I think, who's down. And it might have been Joe Hayden who came in off the edge to try and make the tackle on Peyton Barber. And so now concern for Hayden. Steelers playing this game without Steven Nelson, their starting cornerback. Well, he's out with a knee injury, and Hayden... And they tend to him, hope he's okay. Time now for the Rocket Mortgage, six for service for each touchdown that was scored in the month of November. Rocket Mortgage donated $1,000 towards the fight to end veteran homelessness. There were 384 touchdowns for a total of $384,000 donated. Just really good stuff from Rocket Mortgage. As Hayden is walking off right now with a little help, but Looks to be walking okay. Hopefully he is okay. We'll keep an eye on that. And so Justin Lane in there taking his place again without Nelson and Hayden now. Now down the top two corners. We've shown you that Mike Curtin has had a heck of a game. And it's first and ten for Washington. 
Smith on the fake with some heavy pressure throwing and going deep down the field and it is incomplete. I don't know if Cam Sims ever saw it. It was underthrown quite a bit second down. And just hard. Uh, we've talked about the interior pressure by Washington's front. That, that time it's Pittsburgh. You know, the, a lot of push in the middle, adding some guys to the rush uh, via the blitz. And, and it's hard for Alex Smith to really kind of step into this one. Smith, far side of the field, wide open McKissick for a first down. Oh, there was nobody there, and J.D. McKissick with an easy catch and run. He's got 16. Yeah, it, just an, an odd coverage right there, but it all starts with taking care of number 90. Morgan Moses might have got out of there a little bit quick. He drives them back in. But they were playing heavy, heavy inside leverage on J.D. McKissick. That was easy on the out route. McKissick's got seven catches for 49 yards. Hey, Lane, 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 let's go. Give it to him here on the inside run, and he's inside the 25. And, and I think you need to do that because you, you go out and you open up your formation, you put J.D. McKissick out there. What is the defense doing? What are they trying to defend in that situation? You, you like kind of what you have opportunity of inside, so you bring him back in, and, and no adjustment by Pittsburgh. So able to try and, and get him on the inside run. Well, with Alex Smith, you see what they have done. You know, look, they've, they've been slow starters. We told you that. But overall, with him, they've been better. This is his fourth start. And trying to lead his team to tie this game here at undefeated Pittsburgh in the fourth quarter. Second down going outside again. Again, McKissick is wide open. Going to the change. He's got another first down. His eighth catch of the day, and that's too easy for Washington. And they had J.D. McKissick short, but, but I think that Logan Thomas, 82, was going to break down the field. Oh, I'm sorry, it was actually Cam Sims. It, what, whatever they've done the last few times over there, formationally, has really given Pittsburgh's coverage some fits. They've had guys popping wide open. J.D. McKissick, the beneficiary of um, both hey, hey, plays. Thunder, thunder. McKissick out now as Barber comes in at running back. Blitz is coming. Smith under pressure going in. So he's got it. Touchdown, Logan Thomas. And Washington an extra point away from tying it. It's just one of these designs where you've got guys in a bunch and you really challenge the coverage. It's really Jeremy Sprinkle. Watch 87 right here. He's the guy that helps Logan Thomas get freed up. Vince Williams has him in coverage, but he can't get through. And there's the end of it that Alex Smith standing in the pocket, taking that shot, knowing he's going to get hit by T.J. Watt. Extra point is up and good. Well, Logan Thomas might be having his best game as a professional here tonight. Nine catches, 98 yards and a touchdown. And the Washington football team ties up undefeated Pittsburgh. What a game. Nine catches, 98 yards for him, a touchdown. He's been everywhere for them. Big moments. And Alex Smith is, those are his overall numbers. And he, I think the most impressive thing, he's doing it with pressure in his face a lot. The whole night. And, and what was the one thing he talked to us about? You know, when, when you play against Pittsburgh, the one thing you have to watch out, they wear you down as a decision maker. He's made great decisions all night. Hasn't made that big mistake here in the second half. Cloud gets through and a good return by McLeod. Looked like he was going to stop short of the 30. And a big time return for the Steelers in good field position now. Get the all-new Fox Sports app for all the news, social, live games, and video you care about. It's all in one place. Plus, follow your favorite players, teams, and leagues. The all-new Fox Sports app. Download it now. So here's what we got. 17 all, 9.02 to go in this game. We told you the Steelers undefeated at 11-0. Well, Washington trying to keep pace with the Giants. Who are five and seven? They had the first NFC East win over a winning team yesterday with their win in Seattle. So Washington also trying to pull an upset 
and tie New York atop the division standings. Of course, the Giants beat them twice, so technically they have the tiebreaker, but you get the idea. Lot on the line in the final 9.02 here to go from the Steel City. Roethlisberger quick to Juju Smith-Schuster up to the 45. He's got seven yards and a good start to this drive. Four-man rush again. It's been consistent, and this is going to be an easy pickup of first down to Samuels for Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, and it was there on the last snap, and, and I'm sure that uh, the Jalen Samuels got that message to Ben that they're, they're dropping right now. So they're they're running these patterns down the field, but they're pulling the two widest guys back off the line of scrimmage, and, and it's it's easy right there. I mean, that's a that's a lot of green grass out in front of Jalen Samuels. They line up Samuels in the slot now. As the Steelers just going empty on this drive. Roethlisberger underneath and Johnson has a catch but he's tackled immediately by Jimmy Moreland. And Johnson's only got about a yard and a half. And Jimmy Moreland trying to keep pace with Mike Hilton on the other side playing well for Washington in the secondary number 20's had a nice evening That's not easy right there to find your way across the field and all these crossing routes with with the other receivers trying to create a pick or a rub against you It's coming. Roethlisberger spins away, still on his feet, to Johnson, who hauls it in. Wow, what a play by Roethlisberger. They came with the blitz. It was untouched, and he still got away for the completion. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. You wait the whole night to send the blitz. You're unblocked. Kevin Pierre-Lewis is free all the way to Ben Roethlisberger, and just a little spin out to the left, and he goes flying by. <laughs> it made it look so easy, too. So with that, it's a third down and three. Roethlisberger, some pressure, gets it off, and he's got a completion. Juju Smith-Schuster for the first down. He surveyed the field and he found Mr. Reliable even at 24 feels like he's been in the league forever and he converts and, and again some more kind of vintage Ben Roethlisberger real strong right there by Juju Smith Schuster on the route but look at Ben in the pocket you know flat footed standing waiting for that to open up and that's a that's a little bit going back to the early part of his career now throwing it down the field but yeah kind of hanging in there. Five, three, five, three. And he had Ryan Kerrigan in his face. All passes on this drive so far. Six play of it. Looks, can't hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Boy, oh boy, John Bostic had a chance there. Some heavy pressure from Chase Young. Yeah, th this, this route combination is a little bit deeper across the board. Three vertical routes getting down the field, so he's got to hold this one a little bit longer. He, he's got his outlet, but it comes late. And that allows the four down to, to continue to work on that pass pressure. Chase Young going back inside is the one who finally gets to him. And Chase Young's had an active game today. Seen his speed sideline to sideline. Ever had that play at the goal line on Benny Snell on fourth down? Causing some havoc. Second down and ten. Over the middle, Smith Schuster is there again, surging forward near a first down, maybe a hair short. We talked about all these weapons Pittsburgh has, and Roethlisberger told us the beautiful thing about Smith Schuster is he may not catch a ball for two quarters, but in the end, he always comes through. Yeah, well, he's going to be the guy you're going to be going to right now, and just a little bit too much depth by John Bostic right there. You know, you had Cole Holcomb kind of hanging back. You know what this offense likes to run. And so just having a, a little bit better feel for where Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be coming across the field. It's at seven catches, only 28 yards. It's a bizarre stat line, averaging four yards Set. per reception. Seal the three. Luke 20. 
Third and one. Roethlisberger, sidearm throw incomplete. Tried to get it out the same direction, but Kendall Fuller was up to the task, and now what do you do? Remember, they've got a brand new kicker. I think I think that really weighs into this decision, Kevin, because that you're putting him a little bit further out. This is the tough end to kick into. It, it appears that the wind is, is actually helping this direction, but it does swirl in the open end of this stadium. So I, that, that may have weighed heavily into this decision to go for it here on fourth down. And they will. So Matthew Wright will not get a chance. Fourth and one. They go jumbo formation. Hey, JV! Roethlisberger on the empty set, pumping, now going deep, McFarland incomplete! They go to Anthony McFarland, an interesting choice, it does not pay off, and Washington holds. Well, a lot of confusion, pre-snap, I mean, look at, it. there's John Bostic, he's late getting out, runs a little slant and go. He's got the opportunity, Anthony McFarland just has to have better body control and make this catch. Anthony McFarlane has five catches on the year. And I know they like the matchup, but still with all the weapons they have a wide receiver, that's a fascinating choice to me. You wonder if, if you just saw the confusion by Washington's defense and, and John Bostic being very, very late getting out there just from a coverage standpoint that that attracted his attention to go there. So now can Washington take advantage? It is Barber trying to get to the edge, gets across to 30. And he's got a short game. We'll give him three with 4.43 to go. Washington, a little bit of a tempo here. Tries to sling it out to McKissick. Getting to the edge. That play has worked multiple times as he gets out near a first down. As we go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Hey, Kevin, saw Pittsburgh cornerback Joe Hayden slow to get up during that Washington scoring drive. Well, the news on Hayden's injury, he's being evaluated for a concussion. His return is questionable. Pam, thank you very much. So Hayden is out. Justin Lane is in. That's him right there, number 31. And that is a first down for McKissick with four minutes to play. Steelers have been in these games before. A couple of games have had to come back. They had a hard fought win over Baltimore on Wednesday, but Washington trying to give them their first L. Smith. And gets it to McKissick again. It has been a constant in this second half for JD McKissick. It's one of the matchups that, that Mike Tomlin talked about. Just, you know, it, you've got to shift your thinking that it's not just going to be third down now because he's he's taken up all the snaps for Antonio Gibson. So they, they've got to do a better job of finding him in the formation now on first, second, and third down. He's just not the third down back since the injury to, to number 24. It's his 10th catch. That's a career high for McKissick, who had 46 catches on the year. Smith, and ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And it'll bring up third down. Might have been Cameron Hayward who got that one. Let's see. Indeed it was. Two-time All-Pro. So third and four. McKissick goes out as a wide receiver, top of your screen. Steelers with a four-man rush. Smith going deep down the field, and it is caught! One-hander by Sims! On third and four, Cam Sims with a one-handed grab at a big moment for 29 yards. Boy, he's having a night tonight. This is just a really nice throw by Alex Smith. You see right there, to your point, Kevin, one-handed. He's fending off. Cameron Sutton with his inside arm and that's outstanding and, and it you know it's going to come down to that right guys have got to step up and make plays when the opportunities are there and Cam Sims what a great catch four catches 94 yards for Sims first and 10 Washington on the move Barber, stutter step up the middle and surging forward to the 25 for a short gain. And maybe that takes us to the two-minute warning. 
Uh, actually, no, because Pittsburgh calls their first time out. Yeah, you got to start watching the clock. It was 443, I think, when Washington got the football on this drive. So as we've been watching, you know, some of these plays, and, and especially that one by Cam Sims there, and we're, you, you kind of lose sight of that clock. This has been an impressive drive, not only getting down in position to kick the winning field goal, but not allowing any time left for Pittsburgh to respond. Well, we told you about the Steelers being in these close games they have. So as Washington, maybe not as the same favorable results. Now, look, they finished off Cincinnati. That one was close the whole way throughout, of course, against the Cowboys here and it got you know got ugly at the end they added on at the end but that game was a close game yeah 21 in the fourth quarter by Washington out of course they had the Giants games you talked about this one a little different though at 11 and 0 Pittsburgh a Smith oh dangerous path and Sims is stuffed backwards well that could have been even worse and lost two but Lane and Williamson were there the Steelers now not only forced a third and long but they called their second timeout yeah, I agree with you right there, Kevin. I, that, that just didn't look good. I mean, you, you had all the flow by the Steelers defense coming that way to the play and just didn't look real clean. Nice, nice play by Justin Lane jumping in there and recognizing everything, getting up and making a play. I remind you, tomorrow, special edition of the NFL on Fox, the Cowboys taking on the Ravens. Coverage begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, also available on NFL Network and streaming on Prime Videos. It'll be a 45-yard field goal right from here if Washington doesn't get any further. This is technically the better side to kick a field goal. Third and 10, all tied at 17. Blitz is coming. Smith sees it, gets rid of it. It is incomplete. Terrell Edmonds out there to make sure that did not go any further. And now Washington will rely on the field goal unit to see if they could take the lead. Just not a clean catch right there by Cam Sims. Would have given him a little bit more yardage here. Make it a little bit easier kick for Dustin Hopkins. So Hopkins has a 49 yarder here today. And that was going in the other direction. This is a 45 yard field goal to give Washington the lead. And Hopkins is good. There is a penalty on the play. Hang on. This would give Washington their first lead. Offside. Defense number 20. That penalty is declined. Field goal is good. Yeah, if you're wondering, it was fourth and 10. <laughs> so it would still be a fourth and five. You got to take the lead there. But here's a kick by Hopkins. Clutch from 45 yards out. And, you know, nice job by Mike Tomlin utilizing his timeouts there. You know, you're still outside the two-minute warning right now with one timeout. So, uh, you know, I, I forward thinking, understanding, you know, making sure you have enough time. But good use of his timeouts, conserving some of that clock for his offense to get back out there and see if they can get down and get some points, either to tie this or win it in regulation. Pittsburgh was up 14 to nothing in this game, right? And it just got to the point where, like, man, does Washington have enough to get back in this game Got to give them a lot of credit for hanging in the way they have. Ton of credit. Ton of credit. Another tough start. You know, the one thing that Ron Rivera wanted to see his team do, come out and have a better start. They come out and have a tough start. Uh, and it was there for him. You know, Pittsburgh Steelers offense came out, went, you know, two consecutive three and outs to start this game. They couldn't take advantage of that. Had field position the whole first quarter. Yeah. And then they lose it, and it's 14-0. That, that field goal at the end of the half, that, that, that was huge. And then they get the ball coming out second half and have a nice touchdown drive after really struggling in the first half and get it to 14-10. So very resilient today by the Washington football team. Now the Steelers have some work to do, try to keep their undefeated record unblemished. In this second half, they've got only 93 yards and six first downs.
And so here is Roethlisberger. Look, he's had long win streaks before. He's currently on an 11-game win streak. In 04, he did not start the season as a starter. Tommy Maddox did. Maddox got hurt week two. He won 14 in a row that year. They lost to New England in the conference title game. But now that win streak on the line. Of course, quarterbacks to have those win streaks of at least 11 starts twice. Yeah, Big Ben and Peyton. That's it. But now it's all on the line here. One timeout and the two-minute warning. 2.04 to go. And remember, a brand new kicker. Here's Roethlisberger. Coming near side. Tipped in the air. And it's intercepted by Washington. John Bostic picked it out of the air. Sweat knocked it up in the air. Bostic picked it off. Montez Sweat has become a master at just that. This time, Bostic was in the right place at the right time. Washington looking to do the unthinkable. Heel in Pittsburgh. That one went high into the air, and John Bostic intercepted it. And the Washington football team trying to tie the Giants up at the top of the NFC East which all of a sudden doesn't look so bad anymore. No, no, they're starting to gain some momentum, starting to gain some confidence, and it's it's really the two teams that you, you wouldn't expect. You know, Philadelphia is a team in the East that I think everybody thought would come into 2020 having some consistency without any coaching changes. The other three, you know, with, with the offseason they had, it was going to be challenging. So here's the deal. Pittsburgh only has one timeout left. And they're going to run it to Barber, who gets smoked by Watt, who's trying to get the ball, too. So, reality, they probably only get the ball back with like 14 seconds or so. Here's the last play. It just, you know, great timing, recognition, get up, get elevated, and great eyes on the ball by John Bostic to see it to get underneath. You know, he, he's not got a clean lane to it. He's actually got to work himself around Jalen Samuels to get that ball. And, I mean, how many times, you know, it, it, at some point, you know, hey, Coach, can we, can we run that play out to the left side? This number 90 is just, he's a hes a beast over here on these batted balls. Steelers are out of timeouts. And again, they're not going to have much time left here, if at all. A first game, a first down will wrap it up. Ready! Jumbo formation, three tight ends for Washington. They give it to Barber, who spins his way to nowhere, but the clock will run. You know, the other factor, Daryl, is, and you pointed this out, Washington's game plan clearly. I mean, maybe maybe twice all day, four-man rush the entire game. Yes, very rarely added anybody to that. You know, played coverage the whole time. Uh, the ball was coming out quick. The, the best part of the passing game for the Pittsburgh Steelers this evening was really kind of the old school Ben extending the play and getting it down the field. They did a great job disrupting the timing element, that 2.3 that everybody's been talking about. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, nice job there. But a lot of drops, again, by the Steelers wide receiving core. That, that was a, a, a big issue for them this evening. Uh, third and 12 and Barber cutting back. He's got to stay in bounds and he knows it. And so he'll just fall down now. And now Do you try the field goal here or you don't even risk it? I, I would you know, I would kick it. I, I really would you, you know force force Pittsburgh, you know to get down a again We've talked about this. There's been a couple of decisions tonight where it's Matthew Wright, you know first time NFL kicker He's already got his first field goal tonight, but this how much does that weigh into what you want to do here? Uh, where you, you can take some more time off the clock. Yeah, I, 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 I You know, I'd, I'd rather have Ben Roethlisberger going down the field needing to score a touchdown with a six-point lead. At some point, you just got to put trust in your players, and, and you send Dustin Hopkins out there to make a kick that he should be able to make. Mm -hmm. With 20 seconds left in the game, and a reminder, Monday Night Football tonight on ESPN, that game just getting underway, Bills and 49ers. Now, this has been a thriller here in Pittsburgh tonight. And Washington trying to end the Steelers' unbeaten season. And here comes Hopkins trying for his third field goal of the night. Last one was from 45. This one's from 45. They've got to find a way to get some balance. The Pittsburgh Steelers got to find a way to get some balance in here. You're talking about 14 rushes and 51 pass attempts again. So back-to-back -back games 
with 51 pass attempts. So the Steelers have some kind of magic in them, some kind of field goal block and recovery. They're going to need something like that. Hopkins trying to make it a six point lead from 45 yards out. Snap and hold are good, and Hopkins has got it. And Washington is 17 seconds away from the upset. And the 72 Dolphins are have the champagne bottles out of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, but you know another thing and everybody talks about margin for error and and it's been small for Washington all season long and, and they've this winning streak is about them in my opinion doing the one thing that you have to do week in and week out. Don't beat yourself. They're not beating themselves early in the year. They, they, there were some issues and the, they just weren't playing all that well and and really you look at this winning streak that they've gotten on. They are forcing the opposition to beat them. They are a tough out. And you can tell by today. I mean, it, this, this is an impressive job by the Washington football team. Oh, and, and you're talking about not making mistakes. And that's why it's played so beautifully to Alex Smith, right? I mean, he was the third quarterback. You didn't think he would get here. But he's now gotten to the point where he's starting to flourish again. Yeah. And, and the reason I think that that there was an opportunity for him to be in this position it is Ron Rivera talked to us about that six game stretch with Kyle Allen but that was going to give Alex Smith time to, to get healthy to get confident to understand the system in depth and detail and you looked at Pittsburgh at, at, at Seattle at, at the teams that that Washington has coming up down the stretch I think he was hoping to be able to have Alex Smith in those situations because Alex was going to give him the best chance to win at the end of this season. So Washington trying to win their third in a row to tie the Giants atop the division. How about this nugget from Ed Spita doing the pitch hitting today. Pittsburgh 78 one and one in this stadium with a 14 point lead. Is that incredible? That's amazing. I mean that's even more amazing that. Washington been able to do down 14 and nothing in the first half 17 seconds left no timeouts three man rush Roethlisberger going deep for Claypool incomplete looked like he had a little window there but Everett and Darby helped out 12 seconds left and, and that's been you know really the big challenge for, for Pittsburgh's offense to take that next step you know they've got to get a little bit more balanced they've got to find some type of running game to complement their passing game, but they've also got to be able to get the ball down the field a little bit more, a little bit consistent. Right now, everything's underneath, and uh, you get situations like this, you got to be able to stretch it. 11 seconds, Roethlisberger going for Ebron, makes the catch, and he's inbounds. That's going to run this game out. Down to two, down to one, and the Washington football team with the upset in Pittsburgh. Handing the Steelers their first loss of the season, coming back from 14-0 down. What a win for Washington. 23-17, the final. More to do on the postgame. We'll have it for you. The big win for Washington. Back after this.